12 miles west of Wilson is the Niagara Bar, where the Niagara River flows into Lake Ontario. It's the perfect storm of nutrient-rich water, which attracts schools of bait fish and big salmon. And they're here for one reason, the pack on the pounds. You won't find a higher concentration of kings in the Great Lakes than right here, right now. The fishing can be challenging. Unpredictable currents can throw off your presentation. My clients expect me to put fish in the boat. Knowing the speed and temperature at depth is always important, but here it's imperative. If you don't have a fish hawk, you're dead in the water. Now, Fishhawk is charging ahead. The new Lithium Series incorporates four decades of experience with the lithium power anglers expect in modern electronics. The maintenance-free probe is 40% smaller and has an internal lithium polymer battery that provides a weekend's worth of fishing on a single charge. Wireless smart charging recharges the probe in minutes. Optional Bluetooth communication and probe depth are also available. I wouldn't dream of fishing without a Fishhawk. And now with the new Lithium Series, Fishhawk electronics are better than ever. Good evening. We are live on the floor of the Greater Niagara Fishing Expo. I'm Chris Larson along with Captain Casey Prisco. How are you doing, sir? Good, buddy. How are you? living the dream i can't believe it's already been another year we're already back here at the show i know i missed you i missed you i mean no, I, I missed you not like miss you yeah missed you miss me yeah not anymore oh no it was past tense it, my it's my, my uh my my missing you has been fulfilled <laughs> now that we're back together uh but great show here in niagara the guys put on an awesome show here and it's just fun to be live here on the show floor. And if you're coming to the show, I know there's a few people that have chimed in earlier this afternoon. Make sure you stop in and say hello. And again, we are going to be doing another giveaway here for this segment. And this hashtag here this evening will be hashtag Captain Casey. So put hashtag Captain Casey in the comments, and that will enter you to win that fish box. Uh, just a bunch of you know hats, shirts, stickers, what have you, whatever the guys at the warehouse want to throw in there. And they're going to throw in. Dirty Goose Signature Brown Trout Series spoons. We'll throw into that giveaway. There you go. Captain Casey. You want to know where to get them? You get them from Chris Fishhawk. Throw in some some brown trout spoons as well. And that's, that's what we're going to talk about a little bit here before we get going. we got some a big list of guests coming in, but uh, let's talk a little brown trout before, before we do that. And You've been having some fun doing some jigging here recently. Tell us about jigging that. Jigging some uh, lake trout down on Cayuga and brown trout fish in Lake Ontario. I am um, taking advantage of the warmer weather. Uh, I bought a 242 Rabalo last year and from Crenza Marine, actually, from my good buddy Rick. Mm -hmm. And uh, I love it. It's versatile. I can go out and target these fish any time of the year I want to, and it's nice weather. And, I've, uh, I've actually ran 12 charters so far this season on Lake Ontario in yeah. February. That's amazing. It's a blast. It's uh, it's peaceful. There's no boat traffic, very few boats out there, and some guys are enjoying it with us, but um, brown trout fishing's been amazing, and the lake trout fishing is unbelievably fun. It's for everybody. Young kids, adults, it don't matter. If you know how to reel or reel, you can catch these other trout, and they fight because it's light tackle. So it's, it's, it's just another... Uh, Another thing that you can do that's absolutely a blast when it comes to fishing. So. Let, let's talk about that real quick. Sure. Uh, the, what are you doing? How, how are you catching those fish? Our jig is vertical. Um, our setup's pretty much a one ounce jig with the paddle tail grub. We're finding the fish in anywhere from 160 to 200 feet of water. I use my Garmin setup, uh, my transducer. I watch my baits. I watch the fish start to spray it off the bottom, and you reel away from them. They chase, and when they hit, it's uh, it's just laughs all around the whole boat. It's, yeah. it's a, it's a fun trip, it really is. You were telling us earlier that these these fish, you're not seeing them before you're dropping down. So you're basically 
dropping down into the abyss, and then the fish are coming up as you're dropping down. Yeah, they're um, they're hugging bottom, and then they must hear it, feel it, sense it somehow. But they'll start raising up, and as they raise up, we start reeling away from them to play like a catch catch up game. And they come up and hit it. And the big key to it, you know, to sustain that fishery is big catch and release. I mean, you can obviously you can harvest some. What we end up doing is you reel them up at a steady pace, allows the fish to acclimate to the change in depth. When they get to the surface, you have a pretty good idea if they're bloated there. You burp them, take your time with the fish, you know, to protect the fishery, and send them back if they choose to let them go. And uh, the survival rate's been very, very good. It's cold water, you know. I wouldn't say it's like our summer fishery on Lake Ontario when you bring that lake trout up from 39 feet or 39 degree water up to 70 degree water. Um, but I, it's uh, it's, you watch them swim right away. It's it's really cool. It's a different fishery that you can. Uh, Instead of getting handed a rod on a, on a boat trolling, it's happening right in your hands. You're feeling the strike and the bite. Yeah. It's, it's really cool. It is. There's a few guys down there. I'm not going to say I'm the first one that did it because I'm not. Um, but I heard about it. And a good friend of mine, Nick Sokolowski, uh, showed me last year when we went down. And so this is really cool. And I got the rebound and I said, you know what? I'm going to learn this. And I went down and did it a few more times. And it's fun. Numbers, a lot of numbers, fun day. And it's just... Uh, it's a great day to spend the day on the water. You know, you get a lot of bites. Your arms are always tired because you're fighting fish pretty much nonstop. Mm-hmm. Four rods down, somebody's hooked up just about all the time. So it's really cool. How do you figure out kind of where to start? Because if you're not marking those fish to begin with, and there's a reason they troll, and that's to cover ground. Oh, ground sure. You know, and you're not covering ground, you're doing that. So how do you kind of figure out a spot to start? Um, I like structure. I think everything relates to structure, whether it's a suspended fish or a, a bottom dwelling fish like a lake trout. So if you see some tight contour lines or a ledge or a drop, that's a good place to start and look. And I try to find that and I use my Minn Kota spot lock and find spot, spot lock and work the areas over and just keep sliding until like you're pretty much troll. You're moving until you find the spot. The other day, it was the first spot I landed on. We had 15 fish in an hour and 10 minutes. And that's landed. We probably had 30 on in one spot, you know, and I ended up moving probably 50, 60 yards to the, to the port and caught a few more there. And it just, they follow, you know, action brings action, especially with them. I think, you know, they're eating bait and as you're reeling them up, fish is in, you know, it's tendency to spit up its bait. Mm -hmm. So now you have bait coming down and I think it just brings, brings more and more in. And you just, as long as you have, activity down there they're going to stay around so just getting on that spot and staying out those are important to so see you're using yeah using yeah. the spot lock you're not drifting around no, here no, you've got spot to right over. Yep. Very cool. I, I think it's actually going to work good on lake ontario i haven't done it yet but my yeah. goal is to jig kings and lake trout on lake ontario with the same boat and do it and yeah i think i can do it i know i can do it i'm gonna do it chris you yeah. know it sounds like a blast and i know you know Trolling is typically going to yield you more fish and more bites, but when you can find a spot that's holding fish and be able to catch them like that, I think would just be insanely fun. It is. It's a blast. I haven't had one person that was upset doing it yet. It's, right. <laughs> it's definitely cool. And it's it's great for young kids, people that aren't really into fishing. You don't have to be a skilled angler to do this. Mm-hmm. It's, it's kind of, can you crank a reel? Yep. Anyone can do that. Mm-hmm. If you can do that you can catch these fish. And you're just using spinning rails. Yep. Yeah. Spinning reel with braid, fluorocarbon leader. Real simple. Well, let's uh, let's get into a little brown trout. I know that's something that you do really well. It's a big thing on your end of the lake. Sure. Uh, we had Captain Reb, Rob West got on earlier today, and he was talking about you guys doing uh, salmon school on your end. We are. And he's like, the main difference is those, we're going to talk some browns over there. We're going to mix it well. up. Absolutely. Um March 9th this year, we're going to do the first salmon school on the east end of the lake. Um, myself, Captain Pete Alex, and Captain Rob Westcott uh, are doing a salmon school here at the Niagara Expo. And I got to thinking there's a lot of guys that the extra three or four hours to get out here, mm-hmm. they don't come. Mm-hmm. Well, let's bring it to them. So that's what we're doing. And, uh, yeah, we're going to have some overlapping material because it's the nature of the beast with king fishing. But we're also going to bring into – our brown trout tactics for spring, for summer, and they may seem like a simple fish, but they can be very complicated. And out of all the fish in the lake, I think they're the moodiest. I really do. Yeah. Um, what do you mean be, by that? They can be on and like that, 
gone. They don't bite, shut their mouths. No matter what you do, they just stop. And it could be the wind switched direction, the sun came out. It's they're just moody. You know, I think storms affect them. Everything seems to affect brown trout. Mm -hmm. Water temperature, water color. It, it, it's uh, they're a moody, moody fish. You know, I think they're homebodies, so they're they have a comfort zone that they like and. And that gets changed by any little bit. Could be the temperature move, clarity of the water. These fish turn off, you know. And I think it's, it makes a difference having your uh, eyes dotted and your teeth crossed. And yeah. that's what the school's about. We're going to teach guys just a few things that we do to make it better to put more fish in your boat and have more fun time in the water, you know. So let's let's get into that a little bit. Um, just tell me about if i wanted to go out and do, and do some brown trout fishing wh where do you start i mean where do you how do you get going this time of year i like 20 feet of water or less you can probably catch them out and deeper than that um but that 10 to 12 foot of water and if you can find any inflow uh creek a river system um sometimes power plants like down by us we have west nine mile but it's a little deeper mm -hmm. but if you get the right wind that warm water gets pushed around and you find that warmer water you, you find yeah. a fish there um, various methods, stick baits and spoons, pretty much is all everyone really uses. Some guys are strictly spoons, other guys are strictly sp stick baits. I prefer a mix and let the fish tell you what they want. Um, we did come out with four new spoons this year um, from Gibbs Fishing. That's the Dirty Goose Exclusive Series. Uh, these are four spoons myself and Rob Belmore of Stinger developed when I went and visited Michigan in November. And uh, I had to pleasure of using them in november to see and i've used them now six times seven times and they are good colors yeah i was nervous you know i didn't you got want it right yeah i did I, I i swung and uh i hit the ball this time sometimes you strike out when you when you do this but yeah they're uh they're fish catching colors and it, they were really really good i mean i've find myself putting them in the water every time not because they're new because they're, they're performing mm -hmm. you know they're not the only spoon color that's going to catch fish. I'm not saying that, guys, but they're definitely a few that you want to have in your box. Do you want to tell me about them? Um, there's this, the Dirty Snowman. It's a white spoon uh, with UV tape and some black dots on it. Uh, it's great for dirty water. It's great for clear water. There is a UV can afford it, which is a glow can afford it. Mm -hmm. So instead of having UV, it's glow. Great first thing in the morning, but it has worked in the sun. I've had that. Um, jailbreak. It's a black spoon or black edge spoon with black stripes and yet sartreuse belly um that works all morning and and during the day i like sartreuse i just think something browns like sartreuse i don't know why but they do and then cooper boy after my german short hair um we get south winds in the springtime and it clears up our water and that's like tragedy when that happens um cooper boy is a brown spoon on a white pearl blank and a white back and it just mimics a goby, you know, and a lot of times in the past they've had gobies colored spoons, but they've had a chrome back. Well, there's nothing chrome on a goby. So this thing mimics it. And the other day we went out and we had south winds and it cleared up and that was the only spoon to go. So it shows that match the hatch, you know, try to try to be as close to what they're eating as possible. You're never going to duplicate or replicate it perfectly, but that spoon's really good mimic of a goby and Brown's tuna at this time of year. There's not a lot of bait around. It's been a good spoon. It's named after Cooper. It is. Your dog. And I hear that you got a new roommate now. I did. Um, I got a new German short hair that is, uh, his name's Bubba. Mm -hmm. uh, not my choice of name. It was, he's 10 months old. Um, he's awesome. He's uh, a little different than Cooper, which I wanted. He's still the same color, but he's more of a uh, people person dog. Like he, he's happy with being pet the whole entire time. Mm -hmm. I haven't had him on a boat yet, so that's going to be an adventure we're going to have happen. It's just been cold for him. Uh, but him and Cooper have hunted a few times. They hunt well together. They play together. And uh, they're awesome. Yeah, they're awesome. I don't have kids, so I have dogs, and they're the best. They are. It'll be interesting to see how, how they do in the, in the boat together. And, and, you know, I fished with you a few times, and Cooper is, like, the best boat dog. So it'll be interesting to see how Bob handles the boat. I got lucky. I think Cooper, uh, as long as there's treats and there's a pillow downstairs for him to go nap after he had 20 treats in the morning, yeah, he's going to be good. And Bubba's learned real quick the hot spots for treats around Pulaski, Fat Nancy's. Yeah. You know, I go to uh, get my hair cut. They have treats there and a cut above. And he's learned real quick 
where the hot spots are. So I think he's going to associate the boat with treats and yeah. a comfortable bed downstairs and people scratching your ear. And right. Pretty good gig if you're a dog. Yeah, it really doesn't good. get much better. Real good gig. Uh, tell me about, so we talked about the spoons and what you're using, but how are you deploying those lines on that shallow water like that? Inline boards. Um, I've used Church TX-12 boards, but I'm going to be honest, I just saw Shane from Dreamweaver had some uh, ninja boards, and they were smaller sized. Mm -hmm. And I think I'm going to pick some up and try them. You know, especially when you're out there, my Rabalo, I fish those inline boards right now, and I'm by myself or mm -hmm. with a mate. It's just easier not to have to clip everything. It's one hand, done. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to definitely give them a shot. Um, I think they're going to be perfect for what I want to use them for. Mm -hmm. um, so we're running one color lead cores on inline boards, uh, Chinook divers, same setup like I've done every year on the big boat. Another 10, 12 feet out um, of spoons, and then one color lead cores, six rods, eight rods, and uh, it's been all you need. You know, right now the browns, there's not a ton of bait around. There's gobies, and there's not a lot of pressure, so it's kind of an easy fishery. I mean, mm -hmm. pretty much any catch them. When I was fishing with you, uh, when we were in, in your home harbor, it was late July, and we went out and just banged up the, the browns. I, I know Pete Alex didn't think we did, but we did. Um, He's a walleye fisherman, you know what I mean? Like, he's from Erie, it's like fishing in a pond, right. and they're just walleye. Yep. No drag pulling. I mean, it's like dumb. <laughs> like, how many you want? 30. I got five guys. Let's go kill your limit, and we'll be back at the dock. You know, yeah. the rounds are a little different than that, you know, so... Well, we had a great day. It was really cool. That's still my favorite trips are when I can see like a, a father, son, or father, daughter, kids, and mom, and, and the kids, like families fishing. I love that. My dad started me like that. My dad, my grandfather used to come up to Lake Ontario and bring me every year, three times a year, mm -hmm. to see you and your son and your dad come out. And, you know, I think it was like the perfect storm there when we caught those three browns. I mean, there were three giant browns, mm -hmm. 12, 14, 16 pounds. Those are huge browns anywhere in the world. And you guys did that. That's just a memory that's going to last with me forever. And I'm, I hope it lasts with you guys forever. And that, yeah. was, that was just, that's what I do what I do for moments like that. Right. You know? It don't happen all the time, but when it does happen, it definitely stands out as like, wow, that's, that's awesome. You know? So talk a little bit about how we were going after the fish that day and what that program that looks like year. in the summer. Browns are offshore. When I say offshore, 60 to 80, 100 feet of water. It really depends on where I find my temperature. I look for like 58, 60 degrees and start there. And you're looking for bait and marks with your electronics. Mm -hmm. um, and they can be in warmer water. But that day, we, you know, we'd cover a lot of water. And I remember a lot of the DEC does a great job stocking browns. And we had a lot of smaller fish. Mm -hmm. And we turned directions. And we started getting the bigger ones going west. We were headed west and we turned east. And that's when we caught their bigger fish. Mm -hmm. um, whether it was speed, I don't know that day what it was, but they we started getting bigger ones. Um, but that was all spoons, stinger spoons, and mm -hmm. just divers and riggers. And uh, some days the fish make you look good, and that was one of the days they made me look good. Yeah. What are your favorite spoons for the summertime? Same same deal. Um, stingers and stingrays from from Gibbs. Um, mm -hmm. Natural colors a lot of the time. I'll start with a mix of brights and naturals and see where they go. You know, the, the, some days right off the get, they want real bright colors. Other days they want all naturals, even in the middle of the day when the sun's up. If I had to say a go-to brown trout color spoon, mongoose, it's a green and sartreuse. If the sun's up, that's in the water. It should be in the water in every single boat out there. They chew that spoon. There's a couple versions of it, low ladder back, UV ladder back, but you definitely want to have that one in the one. And there's some days they like a smaller spoon bears compared to a bigger spoon, but try it and let them tell you what they want and then adjust. But well, that's that's kind of your your program out in Pulaski. But you start your season. I shouldn't say you start your season in Wilson because you're I've already started it. But um, you you kind of run in May and into early June, I believe, in Wilson. I do. Uh, talk a little bit about that fishery. We chase. Chase the almighty king. That's what we're here on the lake for. I mean, don't get me wrong. Browns are an absolute blast. Lots of action, fun. Um, but at the end of the day, the king is the king for a reason. It pulls, it screams, it frustrates you, it busts line off, busts lures. Um, so I take three boats. This year I'm going to take four boats because I plan on trying to jig them in the Rabalo. So I have it set up um, for it. I have the right lures to do it. So I'm going to spend some time out there doing that. Um, but I bring three boats to Wilson Harbor. May 1st, we'll fish there till June 8th. Um, 
targeting salmon. We do catch incidental other fish, but we target salmon there. I get to fish alongside my good buddy Pete Alex, which as much as we bust each other's stones, I love being out there in Wilson. The 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 environment, the positivity of the captains, just the whole area. It's just it's such a it's a breath of fresh air from what I'm used to. And I'll be honest, as much as me and Pete bust each other's balls and we want to do better in each other, he motivates me to be a better fisherman. And I think in return it's the same with him and I'm not mad when he beats me on the water because it's going to happen. He's not mad when if I beat him, I'm going to get him the next day. You know, and it just, it's a fun environment. The salmon fishing's amazing. Um, there's days, I, I'll be honest, I wish I lived out here and closer and I could stay out here all year long. But I do love my home port too, just because the options. You know, I have, out here it's salmon. There's some lake trout. The coho is a fun, fun fishery when that's here. That disappears probably mid-June. That's gone. And then I'm back home. But when I'm at home, I have the option. Do I want to catch lake trout? I go somewhere. Do I want to catch browns, salmon? You have that, you know, versatile. You can do whatever you want. Options. Out here, it's salmon. There are some brown trout. The lake trout make a big migration west, or I'm sorry, east um, or west of Canada. So they, they're a little tougher to catch. And I just like to be able to change it up. You know, and it's fun to be able to. Okay, we're going to get Lakers today. Oh, this is a brown trout trip, or this is a salmon trip, or we're going to get a mixed bag. It's fun to be able to have options, and that's what's great about the east end of the lake. Yeah, the weather's a little tougher down there on you, and the environment's a little different with the, with the fishermen, but I get it. Just make it fun and go out and do your best every day. Yeah. You talk about being around Pete, but when you're here in Wilson, or not, I shouldn't say here in Wilson, but on this side of the lake in Wilson, you got a jackie down there fishing with you too yeah he's a part-timer uh he used to be a full-timer now he's a part-timer he's selling boats and stuff you know and he's electronics guru right you know traveling all over learning about electronics he's got a family which that's one thing i honestly didn't see with rick is having kids well probably even having a wife yeah i mean some poor girl said yes <laughs> <laughs> alex you're an angel you know you really are um but he's a great dad he really is it's uh if you knew Rick before kids, you'd be like, no way is this possible. And Rick, buddy, I'm proud of you. He, he, he does the right thing. He really, the kid's got his, he's got his heart. He's got everything. Rick does everything he does for that kid. And it's awesome to see yeah. he's into it. I mean, it's fun though. Just that, you know, when I was there with you, he, he was there too. And yeah. You know, you go in and you have lunch and well, we eat lunch. Too. Rick has two minutes of eating. You ever seen the guy eat? It's ridiculous. Like, he would eat this in one bite. It's, <laughs> it's disgusting how quick he eats. He's, yeah. He's a pig. Yeah. Yeah. A, yeah it's just that's his nature. He's, yeah. He doesn't want to waste time eating. You yeah. know, he's got electronics to learn about. Right. Something. Right. But no, he's a great guy. It's a blast. I, he's another guy in the water that I talk to, and it's all laughs. You know, it's, it's a fun time. Mm -hmm. It makes being out in the water even that more enjoyable. Yeah. Speaking of enjoyable, here's our next guest. I am. You're oh, we don't know if you're in or not, but you're here. You never know. We never know. We never know. Exactly. Yeah. Present Kevin the Greg guys. Sleeman coming in. How are you doing? I am great. How are you guys? Great. Put, Put that on there. Perfect. It's like you've been lifting weights. Well, January 2nd, I started to get after a little yeah. bit. Yeah. 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 Well, I'm you've been lifting aqua traction. Lifting aqua traction. That's, <laughs> that's what he's starting to get going on. Yeah. We're getting there. But before we do that, All right. Fish Hawk has been such a big part of our program over yeah. Team Midnight Express and, and the Craig Sleeman Fishing. Um, 2022 had a great season on the NWT mm -hmm. and put together a little board for you guys. It's a, a little thank you for our top 10 finish over here in Dunkirk, New York. So I'm take back to the office, but, uh, you know, it takes a lot of people to run a fishing team, doesn't it? It does. And, you know, you guys have been a part of that team and without the fish hot brand and, and your product and your support over the last couple of years, it's been uh, great having you aboard. So we want to present this to you guys and awesome. take Thank that you. back to the shop. Yeah, so we'll hang it up. Appreciate everything you guys have done for us. For sure. Mm -hmm. I want to kiss ass. Well, 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 I'm gonna get the 150 of them, right? Yeah. No, he's got those guys. Wait a minute. <laughs> That's how some people are, Keith. I understand. I'll bring you something before this event's over. I, I apologize, Chris. You don't have a carnation from yesterday? Or no, something? I gave them all away. Uh, <laughs> Everybody's excited. I got the busy last night, wasn't it? I was, yeah, the spoons are nice, you know, but it's not as nice as that. Yeah. Right? Oh, you know, I know a guy. Wow. I know a guy. Wow. Well. Casey talked about it. You got got something going on with the aqua track. She tells yeah, me. so uh, we took on a, a dealership down here in upstate New York. Uh, my twin brother Ethan and I have been in small business, you know, in addition to our teaching. So, you know, these last two seasons, I've had the actual aqua traction floor in my boat, my Ranger 621. And uh, 
I'm telling you what, there's no substitute, um, you know, for the precision, for its durability, its comfort, and, you know, for us being on the water 180 days a year, mm -hmm. you know, not only charter fishing, but also competing, it's just been an, an, an asset to the program. And so we continue to try to find the best product that we can control, and that's one of them we could. And, you know, we talked to Nick over in Ohio, and he kind of put us onto a program here, and so we're doing some some boats in the area already. It's gone fairly quickly. So uh, I actually got two approval drawings this morning on a couple of boats that we did uh, last week. So it's it's fast and furious. But for a fishing guy, you know, or, or gal or somebody who wants to get into, you know, a floor aqua traction, again, aquatraction.com, they can look up the different patterns. We can customize your logo. We can put color schemes together. And so the cool thing about it is it's very custom to your boat. Um, so it's, you know, it takes that, that idea of maybe I don't have enough money to buy the new boat this year. Mm -hmm. But I like to upgrade what I currently have, you know, and in today's economy, you know, what a better way to do it than to, uh, you know, put some durable floor in your boat. So, yeah, Aquatrax has been great. Um, a lot of big players on the on the uh, the circuit. I just saw a new one from Johnny Hoyer on the National Wally Tour. He's a, you know, big fisherman in our group. And, uh, you know, he's he's got a brand new 621 with a 400 and Aftec put together an unbelievable program for him this year. And his boat looks just spotless. So Aquatrax, again, a big sponsor, Max Wilson, and also... Uh, couple of their guys on tour so look for us on the nwt in 2024 and if all goes right you can look for them on the dirty goose fleet yeah let's Putting go baby doing all four boats and the rabala with it i met with craig he came up it's pretty neat the whole process we're working it next couple of days we'll have some answers and where we're going with it but i'm sold on it it's uh i've stepped on it here at the show i've got to see it and i've seen it a friend of mine has it he's been using it in michigan for two years now and i like it I think the durability, the cleanliness, the easiness to keep the boat clean, it's sharp looking. Um, it adds to the boat. It's going to protect your boat along with, you know, looking good, feeling good. It's a no brainer. So I'm going to, uh, the fleet is hopefully going to be taken care of this spring. Maybe five boats. Um, there's not going to be anything left in the warehouse after you see it. <laughs> Listen, I'm sold. I'm sold. I'm going to be honest. You know, the right guy, the right timing. But at the same time, we know how hard Keto Casey fishes in his, you know, track of success over these last few years. I mean, he's the Lake Ontario king right now. Oh, and, and, the uh, guy likes to fish. That's, Don't, that's what he tells uh, everybody. But, man, it's the prince in the pudding. No crown, just a regular hat. See that? <laughs> hey, Burger King's open. Yeah, I did. It is. I over there. <laughs> so, but no, we can't wait to get it in there. And, you know, we're going to work really hard to, to push it in this area to the guys that are really in need of of an answer for that, you know, that non-slip and that, that durability. So, yeah, we're really looking forward to uh, to seeing everybody here at the show, too. What a great, another great venue, another great uh, sellout crowd for yeah. your salmon school. We got just word that we got over 100 in our walleye school this year. So, awesome. you know, looking you know forward to seeing everybody and, and you know, preaching the good word of, of fishing. I mean, we, yeah. we're happy to be kind of back in our seasonal, you know, track and mindset that man we better get rolling because yeah, yeah i think you know when we all get together here at this show it's it's when it really hits that man not that long we're gonna be on the water i mean i'm granted this year i'm on the water sure we are it's been a, a, a no winter but normally it's another couple weeks and i'm starting brown trout fishing and this is like a big wake up like boy it's time to get stuff ready and you see all the new custom baits out and you stock up on some of the stuff that you need that you walk down the aisles and you see the different vendors here and you're like wow I need some of that. I forgot I needed them. And next thing you know, you're buying the right stuff and you're catching the right products. You know? Definitely a one-stop shop. For so sure. we got the salmon school. we got the walleye school here. And we talk a lot about education and, and making anglers better and, and just teaching people. But I think the big thing, and it's something that we talk about a lot at Fishhawk, is just growing the sport. And if you guys do what you do in these schools and teach these people to be more successful when they take out their friends they're going to be just more knowledgeable and just better able to teach and grow that sport and get more people in it and i think it's it's really important to do that when you look around in the room and see people and you're like it's nice to see some young people but we need some more yeah absolutely i remember i mean it's changed a little bit but me and jackie years ago talked about it and like there wasn't a lot of young guys charter captains there's a i mean there's a lot of old guys like Pete. Mm -hmm. you know, he's old. Yeah. He, he wears it well, but he's old. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Here we go. Um, you have that. I mean, Bob Song, another old boy. Yeah. You know what last mean? Year. He yells yeah. a lot. He's old. Yeah. Um, you know, you got not a, there's a lot of younger guys now, but there wasn't there for a little while. Mm -hmm. But the, the whole idea of any school or even a charter is my goal is show people that fishing can be fun. And like you said, if they go out and they have better success, 
they may take that guy that's not an angler and make him an angler or have him spark an interest in it and to grow the sport. And I think that's the overall goal of shows like this and of the schools. And when I do my daily report, I want to see people do better on the water, whether it's on my boat or somebody else's boat. Sorry, I touched that. Trevor, you were right. But that's what the goal is, to, to make people a better angler and have a better time on the water. And in return, you see the sport grow. And that's, that's really what you need. Yeah, and I had an opportunity this last summer to partner with Catching Dreams uh, with Ned Librock over here. I just and, about him. That's, you know, that's we, an awesome thing. What an unbelievable program, you know, uh, living through the, the life of the cancer treatments. And my mom, you know, my late mother, you know, this last June who passed. And what a give back, not only for me, uh, you know, to, to move forward with that, but also the smiles, you know, and these young kids having an opportunity to catch a panfish. Yeah. a perch you know once in a while a good walleye or a bass and and to see them in that day that we spent on the water with that those younger minds and those younger kids i mean i've got parents saying hey can we just go again you know it's we, beyond rewarding it's beyond rewarding yeah we you do know? a for cause event same thing and so these little these little wild. tokens of give back and this you know trying to light that fire i'm looking over here at a young you know young bunch of kids looking through all the different colored plastics and picking out bubble gum sankos and you know that's the fire that we all had as a young a young fisherman or fisher person and you know, to see that in them is just, you know, driving us to, I think, to continue to try to grow this. Fast and Bluegill, you know? the gateway drug True. fishing. It is. <laughs> it is the gateway. <laughs> Where we all start. I think it's a good you post know? on that somewhere. So you, you you handed me this when you when you showed up here. Uh, I hear you're going back in 2024. Yeah. The NW2. They invited us back for one more year. Yeah. Been a lot of rule changes. Uh, you know, obviously there's been some different things happening on the national level that, may have or may not have been uncovered this last few seasons so we've got this new rule of no party fishing uh green bay I'm reading now is only three fish limits uh for the nwt crew uh which means once you put your third fish in the live well you're done fishing so whether that's at 9 a.m or 3 p.m whenever you got to be there mm -hmm. that's going to change a mindset you know this year oh yeah you're gonna, gonna throw, you're gonna get bit by that somebody's getting bit somebody, by that. Some, a lot of us are gonna get bit by that you I've, know? I've been bit by that before so you know, I'm thinking you're gonna get a certain size fish and if you had that one fish that you threw back it moves you 10 spots up, and yeah. I like Could've that. Coulda, shoulda, woulda. Uh, same thing happening out in Red Wing, Minnesota. That's a four fish limit, mm -hmm. one fish over 20 inches. So there's going to be a slot limit there. Once you get your four, you're done. It's a lot of strategy. There. So a lot of strategy there. And, you know, we've got Lake Erie on the map, which is, you know, hopefully kind of my backyard of things over in Port Clinton. Mm -hmm. um, have a little bit of knowledge there. But again, that's a that's a calling event. So you've got a mix this year of, of schedule. You got a mix this year of, of some opportunities to fish some different bodies of water. And the last one on on the stop before the championship, if you can make that top forty, is uh, Lake Sakakawi out in uh, North Dakota. Say that fast. Yeah, Sakakawi and and uh, you know his friend. Mm -hmm. But uh, long story short, all of that, you know what, what we really have is you know a very diverse, you know angling method. You know guys are saying, well, what are you going to bring to Mississippi? Well, if you don't have a willow cat, you might as well go home. Willow cats are twenty dollars a dozen. Mm -hmm. You know, if you want a farm raise versus a, a natural cod, you've got to have that prep because when one hundred thirty boats show up, what's how many a, willow cats? What's a willow cat? It's almost if you could replicate a baby catfish. So it's got a stinger on both sides and on its dorsal. And I'm telling you what, are they alive? It's a strike of lightning when you get hit by that sucker. They're alive. They are alive. So live, live bait. Willow live bait. cats. Willow cats. Yep. Walleye so, fishermen. I know. So weird. <laughs> Weirdo. Right? Little cut bait in a flasher. It's pretty, yeah. Sounds yeah, pretty fun. At least it's real. So, it ain't stinging me. Yeah, Willow so cat. makes a non real one. Yeah, Willow cats. So, uh, so a, as a angler, though, like that's a really diverse group of water. And it sure is. creates, you need a really diverse set of skills because those pieces of water all fish very, very differently. And then you throw in all the strategy stuff. But for a guy like you who lives on the far east end of where that is, because you see the guys on, on this NWT, a lot of them live in Illinois, a lot of them live in Wisconsin, because it's centrally located. You're on this east end, it's really hard for you, I think, to get to some of these places, especially since you're a real working guy, so you right. can't go there two weeks ahead of time and fish it. Tell me a little bit about those challenges. And yeah, that's that's a huge these. challenge. Um, and I, you know, with active target and forward facing sonar and, and seeing what these guys have done with it, you know, I've had to sharpen my skill set. So using the Finger Lakes in my backyard has been very helpful. Having Oneida Lake, you know, just an hour away to do a little more rod and hand combat. But you know, we're starting to do a lot more rod and hand combat out here on Lake Erie on this end. And uh, you know, kind of once we open our eyes to what could really potentially be here. 
we're going to see a lot more guys, even on the Great Lakes, this big body of water, breaking it down in small sections mm -hmm. and using that skill set. So, yeah, it's tough. It's, you know, growing up in the walleye world here, we're trollers. You know, we troll worm harnesses, we troll dipsies, we troll lead core, we troll wire. cats. And a lot of those planer cats, you know, planer cats, planer cats, cat, right? Thunder, thunder, thunder cats. Cat, yeah, yeah, yeah. So my willow cats, willow cat. So, Damn it, so the willow cat. <laughs> thunder up your arm once it stings. But you know, having just the right equipment. Mm -hmm. You know, taking my jig program and my trolling program and my box of tricks to all these places to figure out what's going to be best suited for my skill and ability, plus my confidence level. Mm -hmm. Knowing you've got to go in there and put a box together, you know, and have those those chances of of maybe not catching your limit or maybe being short by putting a fish back. So I think it's uh it's trained me well to be around in this area because there's some tougher fishing around here compared to some of that Midwest stuff. But then again, those areas are just, you know, pristine and world renowned. And, you know, just to get a chance to go out and compete at that level again, I think is what excites me the most because I'm going to earn it, you know, every bit of it. Nothing's going to be handed to us again. And having a full-time job and, and trying to sneak away a few days here and there in the spring before we can get to that little summer vacation, you know, is, is challenging all itself with family and, and, and friends and commitments. So but we're going to give it a shot and we're looking forward to it. Where's the championship this year? Uh, it's going to be in Escoto, Michigan, out on uh, Lake Huron. So it's going to be uh, just off of Saginaw. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, that's a place that they've changed the rule again. 30 days prior to the championship, no information. And we can only get five days of practice. So if you make that top 40, it's going to be a top 40 run and gun. And whoever figures that body of water out in five days is probably going to be on to be in the champion. I like so that. I think it's going more to that bass style rule of limited practice when the guys come up to, uh, you know, um, up to the same or the uh, Island. Thousand Island, excuse me. I'm thinking yep. myself, Clayton, right? Yep. And they fish there. They get two days if it gets shortened from the previous. Uh, Those weather. You know, so so, so two or three wow. days, and the best guy wins. You know, the guys that figure out. So it's gonna take a challenge, or, or the challenge going to be, can you figure it out on the day of the event? Mm -hmm. A lot of times, because mm -hmm. what you had on Wednesday is what you're gonna have on Friday. And so I think that's gonna be a big, you know, thinking process too. Is hey, waypoints mean nothing. Conditions. You know, Average clarity, conditions. and that's what I think is a good charter captain or a good tournament fisherman does is they go out there and they fish the day. Figure it out. And, you know, I'm challenging myself. Last year, we fished the North Shore in a little fall brawl tournament, uh, or I should say fall frenzy with Scotty Meisner up on the North Shore. And sure can be no practice, show up. I said no trolling rods, and we had up third place and big fish of the tournament fishing the day. Wow. So those types of things, you got to challenge yourself to go and think that in that format. So mm -hmm. I think we're ready for it. I'm ready for the challenge. Tell me about this this party fishing uh, rule that changed. What happened? So, there? you know, in reading into this further, again, I'm going to get caught up as we start to get close to the season. But, you know, there's certain states and certain zones and counties and bodies of water that have, you know, two people fishing. One guy catches his three fish. He's done fishing for the day. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the rule is if we can bring five fish back, does the pro have to catch his three? And then does the co have to catch their two? So once I caught my three and put them in the live ball, do I sit back and eat Cracker Jacks and figure out the rest of my day while he's trying to catch his two or was it set the hook for the call angler hand over a rod and say well you reeled that one in you advanced the reel that's now your fish we're good to go so there's just too much gray matter i think and they're really trying to sort that out mm -hmm. and uh that's going to be an interesting uh part of the game i think cool well, what new right casey at a table no there's too much gray matter <laughs> i'm just trying to find some of these willow cats no, I'm, really, I'm really intrigued by him. I'm going to ask the guy with the fish tank down there if he can put some willow oh, cats in a next year. Yeah, why don't you grab some willow cats? You can catch me some up there. Where do you get them? Got to go to the Mississippi. That's where they're in the yeah. Mississippi? Mississippi River. So where are you going, Craig? I live 20 minutes from you. Okay. I'm just Perfect. up the road from Red Wing. So well, maybe I'll, see if I can, I'll see if I can snag some willow cats. Cat. Yeah, yeah, right. So is a willow cat like a stone cat? Nope, it's a little bit more, it's a little bit larger in okay. size. So probably talking about three to three and a half inches. Yeah. And literally, if you were to put it next to a baby bullhead, that's what it would look like. Yeah, so we call yeah. them stone cats in the Delaware. Okay. okay. We used to take a rock and hit the rock on top of it. And it there you go. Them, and that's what we use to catch small mouth so and walleye on. Midwestern stone cats. Okay. <laughs> there you go. Greg, anything Good else stuff. you wanted to talk about while you had a chance here to sit, sit with us? You know, just kind of going back to the whole education piece, um, you know, working through a lot of the seminars that are here. Take advantage. So the guys that are going to be out here, the weather doesn't look great for open water fishing, and we definitely don't have any ice. So if a guy can take advantage of even an hour, you know, a two-hour slot, if they can't attend one of these schools, um, definitely try to get here. There's a huge amount of topics this year. Oh, yeah. You know, and the one thing that I just, you know, looking through the schedule here with my dad, who's covering our aqua track today, so i got to give him a big shout-out, a big thank you for being here. But uh, go over, yeah, of he's got to go live on Facebook or something to show his friends, I think. But anyway, so this is yours. <laughs> all the crafts. I, uh, <laughs> no, they, well, that's a good smart man right there. He didn't own them. Well, so he I, says, Craig, your dad, or, so you Craig's dad, and I go, is he in trouble? Yeah, he, most times he's probably in probably trouble. Probably in trouble. 
But I think, you know, there's enough going on, even if you don't and are not in the market to buy a boat, buy a ton of new equipment. There's a lot of cool guys in here talking about a lot of cool stuff. And I think if we can just learn from each other, you know, I want to sit on the salmon school just for now, just to see what, because I'm going to apply something that these guys can teach me about my trolling program, mm-hmm. you know, and vice versa with the technology, you know, everything's constantly evolving and changing. So try to grasp as much as we can and learn from each other. You know, we're, we're, we're going to be students of the sport forever. Right. There was a guy, late Pat Comerford. He was probably one of the, he was one of the best on Lake Ontario and my friend Brett was lucky enough to fish with him, and he said something. You can learn something from the worst angler on the lake. And if you have that mindset that you can always learn, you're only going to get better. Mm-hmm. But when you think you know it all, you're done learning, pack it up. And you know, and, yep. and that's what's great about out here is, you know what? I do something different than you do, something different than you do. Mm-hmm. But you know what? You tweak what I do, and maybe it'll work for you. Like, I'm putting a Thundercat in an atomic rig and catching a king on Wilson this year. Yeah, Definitely. You know? For sure. Wasn't yeah. there a cartoon called the Thunder? Thundercats. Yeah, Thundercats. Thundercats. Yeah. That's, I mean, that's probably why we've been watching too many cartoons. And it's yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, there you go. Yeah. The Eryptor. I am. That's like. Do you know like, what the New York State fossil is? No. Do you know the national, the you know, like the national bird, and you know the New York State fossil is the Eryptor, right? No. Okay. I've been at school too long for that. Yeah. Way, <laughs> way, this guy doesn't need to fish. He's way smart. He yeah. shouldn't be a fisherman. Fishing right. Right. That's why I teach art, not math. All right. <laughs> Captain Craig. Hey, thank you guys. I appreciate it. Thanks for being here. Thanks, Casey. Thanks, thanks, man. Look him up. Aqua Attraction. I'm telling you, if you want to check it out, get a hold of him. I'm sold on it. Let's roll. I'll show you Dirty Goose Rigs. There's a guy over there. I'm going to load it up now. Matty He's my next victim. All right, Craig. Thanks, guys. Thank you, Joey. I appreciate you guys. All right. I see Joe Yeager hanging out. I saw him a minute ago. Is he right behind us? Yep, he's uh, just finishing up a conversation. That gives us a second. If you haven't had a chance to do so yet, you can enter our drawing for that Fishhawk swag package that Casey has added some spoons to. I will pull that up right now. It's right there. Hashtag Captain Casey. Put hashtag Captain Casey and that'll get you in the drawing. If you've already entered once, you don't need to enter again. It only allows you to enter one time uh, per user. But go ahead and drop Captain Casey in there. We'll do the drawing at the end of the show. And you'll have an opportunity to win the Fishhawk swag bag. And if anybody's got uh, any questions in general on fishing, go ahead and drop in there. We'll get them get that uh we've got an expert sitting right here next to us just a guy who likes to fish but i'm going to talk about an expert look at that hat that new swag from fishhawk yeah it's official this that's one is like th- this is uh yeah, i'm jealous limited edition. i mean I, if you want to sell me that used i'll buy it used yeah that's a, that's a nice hat. i should sell you the one i mean i could make it look good not as good as you but i would make right. it look good yeah you know what i mean you got more hair than i'll get i do have a little more not too much <laughs> i took a lot of it off at the at the hair cutter but uh it was time. I was starting to look like one of those trip guys, you know, like yeah. last year. Yeah. It was bad. I fished the trips with Pete this year. And I'm going to tell you, it's like the hatchery where he fishes. Mm-hmm. Now, he would never catch fish in like a real environment. Yeah. He came to the Sam River. He'd zip. You know, he's fishing. Nice, nice stream. Beautiful. Mm-hmm. But they're just waiting for him. It's like he knows them by their name. You know, it's it's. So I just want to miss your thing. It's not really uh, fishing. It's more like catching with him. Yeah. You know, I'm excited. This guy's showing up right here. Yeah. I don't think he gets as much recognition as he should. Well, that's why we're bringing him out. That's why I, I requested this guy right here. Uh-oh. Mr. Joe Yeager, how are you? How are you? Great. Great. Good hey, to see you again. I think we had you on. You were on the show. You are like one of the first 10 episodes probably. of the show. And now we, we probably got Probably a long back. time ago. Yeah, it was. It was Pre-COVID. 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 Can't even remember that long. When we were doing the shows in the back room. Mic him up? You know, I don't know. I was thinking about that. Maybe we'll just put it right here. I think we'll be good. Okay. Is that okay? Yeah. Two mics. Yeah. Double mic. Yeah. Oh, boy, I'm feeling well, good. Well, I got ready. the two mics out because we got double guests coming We do have a special out. guest coming. Pretty cool. Yeah. So, Joe, Greater Niagara Fishing Expo, you kind of got rid of the outdoor in the name. We did. It's Fishing Expo. It took us so, about four years to convince them that we didn't need Expo when it was all fishing. Didn't didn't need outdoor, didn't, right? No, yeah. didn't need the outdoor. It was all fishing, and uh, that's been our that's been our goal is to get it 100 percent fishing. Yeah, there, there isn't a lot of shows around that uh, are 100 percent fishing, and uh, we do our best to make it 100 percent. Each year it seems seems like it's better. This year it's been really good. Yeah, yeah. I walked around just a little while ago, and the vendors are just 
awesome. I mean, it's just a, a great variety of stuff. I mean, it's, it is a solid fishing show. Yep. Yep. That's our goal. That's yeah. our goal. And then the other thing I noticed walking around the hallway, and this is every year, but, you know, a great variety of seminars and a ton of people in there going to them. Yeah. So we're actually very fortunate to have the facility we've got. Um, so in this, in this area, we've got about 181 booths. Um, in the other half of this, so this is half of the event center or conference center. The other half is where all our seminars go on, and we've got uh, about 18 rooms mm -hmm. that we utilize over there. Uh, biggest room seats 170. Our man here, Casey, he'll be there for eight hours entertaining the people tomorrow, 170 of them. So uh, it'll be a slug fest throughout the day. It'll be a good time. Rob and uh, Pete Alex with them. So, uh, and, and not tomorrow, that's Saturday, Saturday, Friday night. We got them for three and a half hours. Meet and greet. Yeah. So um, we're going to keep them busy, but uh, a lot of seminars. I think this year we ended up uh, 255 seminars. That's for the $10 admission coming in the door. They're all free. Mm -hmm. um, anyone from perch to walleye to tributary fishing to open lake fishing to um, fly fishing, marine electronics, real a lot of interest in marine electronics, pan optics, the new live systems. Uh, Craig, I hear Craig, I just wanted to buy, and Craig was talking about forward facing sonar. Um, we tried to make this new it, fish hawk electronics. New, new, oh, how could I forget that? The new <laughs> fish hawk electronics. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So uh Trevor's Trevor was just, Trevor's going, doing a seminar right just now. going to a seminar and a couple of guys stopped me and he said, uh, hey, is he gonna get into all the ins and outs? And I says, He's gonna be in there for sixty minutes. You got him for sixty minutes. And yep. most of our seminars, quite frankly, the guys would do fifteen, twenty minutes of presentation and then the rest is just open. Because yep. people really want to ask their questions. Yep. They want to get your, they've got a detailed question and they're looking to get answers to those questions. And it usually goes for the full 60 minutes and we got to boot them out at the end of 60. So the next seminar starts up. Yeah, I think Saturday morning, keep an eye out guys, but Saturday morning, I believe I'm going to go into the seminar room with Trevor and we'll get the camera set up and record that and bring that to everybody. So if you want to see that the new Fishhawk Lithium Series, want to see the hour-long seminar, want to have an opportunity to ask some questions to Trevor uh, Saturday morning, uh, we'll have that. And I'll, I'll put that up on the Facebook page and the Instagram, too, so you can get a time on that. But uh, That's great. It should be, should be really good and give people an opportunity just to see what one of these presentations looked like. And I know, I think Trevor's not in the, he's not in the Casey Prisco room, but he's in a pretty good size auditorium for that. One. Oh yeah. Yeah. He's in the, he's in a 60 seat. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Real nice one. It's like being in a college yeah, the, yeah. theater seating, right? Yeah. I mean, it's like you look up and you go, Holy God. Yeah. Nice so, plush seats and tables. Great. And you go, this is too good for us fishermen. Exactly. Well, we only have one like that. Trevor really doesn't fish much. You know, no, that's, that's, why, you that's, why, that's why he's there. That's right? why he put him in there. Trevor's yeah, yeah. a classic, yeah. Yeah. classy dude. Yeah. 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 CEO. Yeah. All that. Yeah. 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 He's important. He's more of a dangler. Not much <laughs> of an angler. We know, we know guys like him, you know? Uh, but so basically our show was built on education uh so we got this you know the kind of teaching fishing show is the way we brand the show and that's what differentiated ourselves from most of the rest of the shows so between being 100 percent fishing and the education aspect of it that was what kind of gets the people here and, and as a new show i mean shows aren't booming across the country and there's not a lot of new shows starting up in fact there's more shows dropping out now than that are starting up so this gave us the opportunity to do something different, and that's what we chose to do. And so we built the education, figuring the exhibitors would come. The education is terrific for sales. As you know, Casey did uh, pan optics, PS30, yep. and Rich Ijacky was down there selling PS30s. He couldn't get the guys couldn't get the money out of their pocket fast enough to buy them. I don't know how many how many he sold that sold, first day. Yeah, it was unbelievable. Almost sold out. It was crazy. Almost, it was, and that's not a trivial unit. Yeah. You know, that's a big time, big time purchase. Uh, but people want to go. They want to hear Casey talk about how he really uses it on his boat. They want to ask him some questions and then they can go to the you know, Garmin guys are down here. They can go to the manufacturers, talk to Garmin about it, and they're running right over to Hijacky to buy him. Yeah. So it, it's uh, that's that that whole process is what 
what makes the show go. Yeah, when you're buying something like that, it's not like buying a spoon either. It's no. something where it's you're going to have a lot of questions about how to set things up and what accessories do I need and my batteries and all these types of things. So right. having experts on site that can kind of go through that yes. with you is a really big deal. Yeah, yeah, that's 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 what this whole thing was built for. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about Lotso. What's happening oh, there at the Lake Ontario Trout and Salmon Association? Um, well, last year we ended up with 580 members. Um, I know when I started, I think we had 23. That was a long time ago. Uh, but it's it's grown. Uh, we the Lotso was actually built on education, the same thing. So all our seminar, all our meetings are really not meeting meetings. They're really seminars. So bring bring different speakers in. Um, and that's what kind of precipitated us going to a, a lots of show, which was 15, 16, 17 years ago. And we outgrew that. And then this is that's how this started is from us going to this. Um, so we do a lot of pen rearing. You know, tomorrow in our salmon school, we've got a raffle uh, for a lot of the different products from the manufacturers, including including fish hawk. Um, and 100 percent of that money goes to our pen rearing. Yeah. Um, so we're big on the pen rearing. Uh, we've run a, run a number of different tournaments over the course of the year. Our tournaments are different from what what Casey and Pete and those guys fish. Our current our tournaments are, are more for the everyday weekend angler type of guy. So on Friday, we actually, in the middle of July, we do a free tournament. Limited to 60 boats, which we load up. Everybody, we get our 60 boats. Uh, doesn't cost you anything to enter. We give out seven hundred and fifty dollars cash. Plus this year we've given given out a, a free mount. Um, That's awesome. And it just gives people. It's really kind of the entry ground for people to get into the tournament fishing. So you get to see how you do. There's no risk. Afterwards, we have a big barbie, a uh, big cookout for people, with drinks and everything else. It's all free. All compliments to lots of. Um, and then Saturday we do uh, a big one single big fish tournament. Same thing, 100% payback, 70 bucks a boat to enter, you know, so it's not a big deal. So Friday becomes kind of our pre-fish day, give someone, give people some incentives. Saturday we go on the big one, which isn't, not big money, but there is a lot of pride at stake. So it's, you know, you'll hear Pete, Pete and Casey going at each other, you know, over who's better right? <laughs> and that kind of stuff. Within lots, it allows us to compete against each other and see how you stack up against the best guys in the club. Mm -hmm. But the cost is minimal. The payback isn't big, and they have a full, fully catered picnic after that for the guys. So those are the kind of things we do for our members. It's more on the low end and stuff. Um, but eventually, we get people in there that go, you know, I'm pretty good at this. I want to get in, into the Wilson Wilson Big Tournament, or I want to get into the Big Blats at the Oak Orchard Big Boys, or you know, whatever. And they feel a lot more comfortable because they fished tournament fishing with all the. It's not shotgun start, but it's a 6 a.m. The rules are the same kind of thing, and they got to go through that whole process. We let a big way in in front of everyone, and so that's kind of where lots is. Lot yeah. more on the low end, but our our whole thing is about getting recruiting people into the fishery. Yeah. I'm glad you said this because, honest to God, I had no idea about any of this. Oh, yeah, no, I had no idea. Yeah. I know I can tell you this, guys. If you do see this gentleman walking around, take the time and say hi and thank him. Once again, maybe it's me being arrogant or me being blindsided and not realizing it. It just seems like it's, oh, you just show up to the show. You don't know how much this gentleman does behind the scenes to make this actually happen for everybody. And it's not like he's getting paid to do it. He's taking his own time to do this and to make it such a success. I had no idea. Him asking me to do the school enlightened me to how much he actually does to do this. And I'm not saying it because he's sitting next to me. I'm saying it because... It, we should all be thankful because there's a lot of people that are getting a lot of great knowledge, a lot of great products from this because of this guy. So if you see him, shake his hand, tell him thank you. And, and kind of the converse holds true because there's so many people here that donate to us, uh, help us out with our tournament prizes, help us out with this. Um, just about anybody I asked to do the salmon score, I asked Casey, he can't get the words out of his mouth fast enough. Sure, I'll be there. Not, not a question. Pete Alex, Bob Song, and um, you, you name it. You go, Rob Speaking Mallory. of Song, let me interrupt you real quick. You guys need to talk to his wife and get your shirts starched up. Bob Bob would be disappointed in your shirt. I'm just telling you. <laughs> Did this I, happen to me? Well, I came back to the hotel last year. They had an iron ironing board in the hotel. I show up at the hotel last night. 
There's an iron in there. No iron in there. I'm just saying they're bad. They're like a 7 out of a 10. Bob's 10 Bob's out of a 10. Right, his best. wife's got him on point. I mean, he's older. His yeah. hair's not so much. I mean, he's getting really old. Like, it's yeah. probably too much for him to be here today. Yeah. Three days is going to be a lot for Bob. Four would be like, yeah. yeah. But he, he can get you guys. Yeah. He's got some nice oh. shirts, too. I mean, they're they're beautiful. He, they got the embroidery. He dresses her man to the 10. Yeah. I mean, yeah. he's, he's the only guy. Five. But when she gets done dressing him, no. he's like, hey. So he's the only guy I know that fishes all day mm-hmm. with his with his clients, cleans all the fish, 75, 80 degree day, hot and humid on the lake. He gets in, he changes his shirt so he has a bright, fresh shirt on. Yeah. And then he does, yeah. then he does his report yeah. from the boat. Hey, from the boat. Just got off the boat. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Look at that. Yeah. yeah. That's smart. Makes that, it makes good. Sense. She, she takes care of him. That's true love right there. Yep. Stand by your man. And Mrs. Songen does that. Yeah. Going off of what Casey was talking about, and what we've actually, we were talking with Craig, too. You know, something that we do with this podcast is we're trying to grow the sport. Yeah. And, and that's what you guys do, too. You talked about the tournaments. You talked about the different events. The other thing you guys do, and I think it's once a month, is you do kind of like an education thing where you bring in a Casey, yep. you bring in a Pete, and people can just come out and hang it on the dock with him and he'll – do like a little mini seminar once a month. I think that's huge. Yeah. Yeah. That That's how this whole thing started and kind of evolved into this. But so in May, right before the spring derby, spring lock derby, that Thursday night when everybody comes into town because the massacre is on the bar on Kings, <laughs> as, as, as Casey, as, yeah, <laughs> Casey, come on. Come on. Uh, the massacre on the bar. Um, but uh, anyway, we do uh, at the dock thing. Uh, with a cookout, we're cooking, cooking hot dogs and stuff, and uh, we bring one of the captains in, yeah. and basically they just back up to the dock in Wilson, and there's, I think we had 85 guys around yeah. last uh, last year. You know, everybody's just ready to go. It's the first day of the spring lock is tomorrow morning, um, and it's just a, a really good, but that's one of our meetings. Yeah. So, and the guy's at the dock, hey, how do I do it? He pulls out, ah, this is the spoon, you know, blah, 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 blah. Here's how I rig this. How do you run that board? He shows, yeah, oh, they run those clips. It's it's really, really, really good. And quite and that's all the captains. I mean, that, the captains around year. here, who is doing it this year? You would ask me a tough question like that. <laughs> um, I should know that. Give me a second. Take your time. Give me a break. I know okay. you've been yeah. busy. But uh, the show itself, you know, we talked about the uh, just the vendors here. But yeah. um, just a, a beautiful setup. And... and Trevor was talking, you know, the room just looks incredible. And you guys, you can see just how much work and, you know, the website's new, got a new look to that and uh, yeah. just awesome job. Yeah, it's been, it's been, it's been good. And, you know, the convention center here, um, basically that's all their operations people doing this thing. Mm-hmm. So there we got this, this works because in Niagara Falls, this is obviously off season. There's not a lot of whole pe- bunch of, Hotels aren't filled from tourists walking around Niagara Falls and down in Devil's Hole and all that kind of stuff to see to see that that whole process that they come here for the rest of the year. So we kind of fit this niche, right? We bring a ton of people into Niagara Falls. This is what the convention center do. This is a state-run facility. It's not a we don't. It's not a free, free, free. But it's basically their job is to bring people downtown. So they work at this just as hard as we do to make this thing fly and, and that's quite frankly how it how it works and the staff's pleasant i have not yes, met a good. single person that's not been pleasant or going out of the way to help you i had a room that was a little cold the guy came in fixed it anything you've asked these girls or guys it's yeah. been amazing like this is just top notch the only thing i'll say being a big dude i like food food's good and it's also really well priced and an awesome bowl of soup. Trevor just had some soup there. It smelled amazing. I mean, yeah. Yeah. I wanted to see if he yeah, we just, anybody we took just, it. We just got done eating there. So they have a chef on board yeah. on site here. So it's not the rotisserie hot dogs, that kind of stuff. Yeah. And basically he preps fresh meals every day and he sends them out there and keeps them, them loaded. And I think a slice of pizza was like three, three bucks. bucks. Yeah. Where do you get a slice you of pizza for puppies? three? Yeah. yeah. I mean, I just looked at it. I said, well, I want yeah. one, but. Fought the urge, you know what I mean? Good job. So yeah, it's 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 just yeah. a really nice environment for all of us, and uh, that's why people keep coming back. And every year we get more and more. You know, we sold this thing out real real early. Um, Salmon School sold out two and a half months ago. 170 seats two and a, two and a half months ago. Yeah. Well, I'm not sure, that, but I'm pretty out. sure that because of Pete Alex, 
It might have been the fastest sellout in history. Yeah. But that's because of Pete. Yeah. He's a big deal. It, it, well, we're going to give Pete some credit. <laughs> Pete did a darn good job, and you did too, and Rob did too, of promoting it. Like, yeah. you guys were on social and talking about it and they did. getting people excited about it, and that's what you need. I honestly you know? love the fact that you can help somebody become a better angler, like I said before. Helping anybody catch more fish is so rewarding. It doesn't have to be on my boat. It could be another charter captain. I don't care. I love seeing that somebody can catch more fish. And maybe it's one little thing they picked up for me. That's that's right. so rewarding and, and awesome to be able to help somebody. Like, I don't know what I'm, I love it. I love it. Well, there's, there's no, you can't go to school for this stuff. Right. Right. I mean, we learned it from our fathers, our grandfathers, the next door neighbor's dad, you, you name it. But it wasn't like we went to school for this stuff. And it's kind of like, where do you go to get, perch information right who, who teaches perch schools yeah, we we they, they're standing room only you go down there for a perch seminar yeah we got a room at seat 60 they'll be out the door to go into that thing yeah, yeah. i get seven or eight perch seminars people love like, perch yeah but <laughs> where do you go for perch seminars yeah right free right here you know, right 10 bucks to get in the door and parking's for free you can't go too far wrong Exactly. Joe, really appreciate it. Thank you. Appreciate the back. time. Yeah. Thanks no, for thank me you. You're really you're awesome. doing and Let make sure he goes to bed early tonight and he's ready to rock and roll oh, tomorrow. Ready. <laughs> I gotta, tomorrow's a bye day. It's just meet and greet. Yeah, it's tomorrow night. Saturday is the game day. Tomorrow Friday. night. Yeah, 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 yeah. Tomorrow night will challenge him, though, because that meet and greet is, you know, we got beer and wine and everything for the guys, and they'll be walking around, prying. Drinking my ginger ale right now. Yeah, prying secrets out of Casey. There you go. Hey, well, thank you very much. Night. Thanks, Joe. See you guys. Thanks, Joe. All right, we're going to put our headphones on now because we have a guest calling in from distant places. And I see he's already ready to go in the green room. Let's bring him up. Captain Richard Ajecki, how are you? You're in the green room. I'm in the red room. Yeah, you got the red room. Tell us about where you are. I am at, before I get started, Joe's probably still there. So I'm going to say this as loud as I can. Joe. Change the dates of the show back to when it was so I can be He left. He left, and we don't want you here. <laughs> Seriously, we don't even miss you. I've asked people, do you miss the Jackie? And they're like, who's the Jackie? Well, they don't even know you me. anymore. Yeah, but nobody they tells you the truth anyways. They don't even know you anymore, bro. Well, well I miss you. I miss you, Rich. There's one, and there's only two people on this on this podcast right now. So, hey, Oh, I don't miss you. I just talked to you yesterday, and that was like enough for the month. And Chris only says that because he has to. That part you need, I'm gonna send you a video of me stepping on it. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> so I am. Uh, I'm hanging out at the Central New York Boat Show up in Syracuse on the fairgrounds, um, talking to people about riding on pontoon boats and towing their kids around in tubes. So it's pretty exciting. I know you'd rather be talking fishing, but yeah. again, kind of the same thing. Those people need someone to talk to as well, and. And you bring expertise to pretty much everything you do. And I think it's important for somebody to be able to go out and talk to someone who knows what they're talking about when it comes to pontoons. Yeah, I have a qualifying question. I ask them if they bring a fishing pole on the pontoon. If they say no, I don't walk away. Well, rod, Rick. Fishing rod. Flags fly from poles. We fish with rods. God, dude. Whatever you want. No. Not whatever you want. Rod. rod. Fish uh, rod. Quit playing with your rod under the table there and put your hands on top. <laughs> it's mine. If I want to, I will. <laughs> See, well, I told you, it's, uh, that's, he, he makes these shows go off the rails. Yeah. It's him. Yeah, it's definitely him. Yeah, so I'm over <laughs> here having fun selling boats. That's what I'm doing this weekend. Well, Rick, let's talk, let's talk some fishing here. And uh, we talked a little bit about... Um, We've talked this today already about fishing out of Wilson. We've talked some fishing on Pulaski. Let's talk a little bit about your neck of the woods. Your your kind of your home port, the Oak. Um, tell me, tell the audience a little bit about the Oak and what makes it special. And don't say you, because you don't make no. anything special. Yeah, your your brother might, but not you. Uh huh. I fish out of the Oak. I'm sure everybody has uh, has already heard that before, but. What I think is special about the oak is just the atmosphere in general. I fished all over Lake Ontario, and no matter where I go, there seems to be animosity in the ports for one reason or another. At the oak, I literally sit down and have breakfast with captains every morning that I'm there. 
we sit down and have dinner with a group of people that can range from 10 people to 30 people every night at the marina. It's just a great atmosphere. Everybody is, is happy, gets along, shares information. Um, it's just a, it's a great area. The uh, We get a lot of traffic from out of state, Ohio, Pennsylvania. Um, someone talking in the background there? Yeah, somebody somebody just went the door here. Oh wow. <laughs> look, at this, look at this legend. So, I'll share with you. They're sharing headphones so they can hear you talking. I just stopped. That's cute. Say. That's cute. First his hands were under the table, now he's sharing headphones. I will so what you're saying about the old orchard, I will agree. That's the only port where and I think I said this earlier. It'd be five, six, eight captains would get breakfast together. And then go out and fish. There's the the camaraderie there. It's just some. It's it's like he said. It's second to none. It is an awesome port with great guys, all out to do the same thing, have a great time on the water. And no, it really is. Everybody gets along. Yeah, I've, only, I've only ever heard of one person get a gun pulling on them. Um, it's just it's a great area. Yeah, that was Casey, <laughs> and he deserved it. Uh, you know, I did deserve it. Yeah, yeah. We we stayed at some little mom and pop. Uh, motel when we were there fishing with you too and that place was incredible too it was just a, a really really nice place to stay and it was super clean and very affordable and I, I love that too it was just a little place in the water we'll stay there so yeah the cool combination as well yeah the marina owns a bunch of houses and uh, most of our clients stay right there on site they wake up they walk to the cafe grab their coffee when I mean, the cafe opens at five o'clock every morning They've got coffee on, breakfast sandwiches, whatever you want. So they grab their coffee. And the Black and North for boat. dinner. Yeah, that's not yeah. They, they, there's, there's a couple of restaurants. There's uh, got about three choices within about a 10-minute drive. So um, so that's nice, too. Most people like the Black North because it's within walking distance, and they can have a few drinks and walk back to their place and call yeah. it a night. Well, Rick, let's talk a little bit about the fishing. We talked about the restaurants, the places to stay. Um, tell us a little bit about the fishing there out of the oak. Fishing there is really consistent. There's usually a really good spring bite there. Um, I feel like we catch the tail tail end of the um, the Niagara River plume at uh, at the oak. So we've got good colored water. We've got plenty of fish, whether it's April, May, June, July, August, September. There's always salmon to catch there. We can uh, we can catch them in the spring as shallow as uh, you know eight, ten, twenty foot of water. And throughout the year, they're within six miles of shore. Uh, the most you ever have to run would be in August or September. You got to run six or eight miles offshore to start your troll, and you'll eventually run into the fish. So our our runs are fairly short, which is nice because we've got. Um, probably some of the highest gas on the lake there as far as the uh, price goes, but um, it's a great port. It's very efficient to run out of there because you don't have to go far and the fishing is good. A lot of your days uh, kind of get cut short because you fill the box. So it's a, it's a great consistent port to fish out of. Yeah. It drops off real quick out there. Well, talk a little bit about your summer program and what that looks like when you're out chasing those Kings out of the oak in the summer. Yes, typical summer bite. We're going to be mixing it up with salmon and steelhead. Uh, if we're fishing inside waters, it's going to be mainly salmon and, you know, you run into the occasional brown trout. When we're offshore, you're, you're dealing with salmon and steelhead fish and thermal client stuff. It's, um, you know, those are your main targets. We never have to go fishing for lake trout other than maybe in April if the brown water gets too, or the brown trout water gets too clear. Uh, but it's a uh, very good port with a variety of fish that are, usually pretty close to uh the pier heads jc what do you got for rick you know i have a lot for rick i what i really want to talk about is is your boy into fishing yet let's talk about the kid is he going to be better than you or as good as you as good as uncle craig he likes fishing he's he's intimidated by uncle craig though uncle craig really intimidates him um which doesn't surprise me one bit. You know, he's, he's rough around the edges, but um, he enjoys going fishing. He loves going on the boat. Me and him were sitting in the uh, boat in the garage this past weekend and messing around with stuff. He likes, he, he got really scared because I put a bunch of hooks in my hand. He thought I was going to get hooked. So uh, I he cares about you. 
I, I taught him not to play around with hooks because I don't I feel like taking that drive. You know, what, you know what I'm looking forward to? And this is going, this is like a throwback, but do you remember, you obviously remember your first boat, the Bayliner. Yeah. You and your, it was you, Craig, Jeremy Sage, your uncle, and your dad. And I remember some of the loud yelling coming from that boat on the water. I can't wait until yeah. he's like, Dad, we're not putting that down. And you're like, yeah, we are. It, was, it is going to be like instant payback for all those times on the water. That's what I'm looking forward to. No, uh, that's not going to be a problem. I'll just give him Craig's side. I got I got my side. Kid, go do whatever you want on that side. No, Let's listen. Competition. He's not going to listen to you. He's he's, oh, a, he's your kid. No, not when he gets to be a certain age. He, he'll listen. No. I'm raising him right. Yeah, your wife's raising him right. And if your <laughs> wife says he's going to fish your side, you're going to listen to your wife, whether you like but, it or not. So my wife, my wife's uh, father, my father-in-law is uh, is very good at kung fu, and my kid is already training in kung fu. I can't wait for the day. And I just say, go kick Casey's ass. It's coming. Yeah. You know what? He it's likes coming. me better. I, I've, already, I've already choked you out once. Now my kid's going to do it. So you're going to get choked, choked out, out by me and you my kid. smothered me in a closed area. You like <laughs> sneak attacked me. Yeah. I mean, who does that? It's so weird. You know, but I'm telling you what, your kid's going to kick your ass is what's going to happen. That's why your no, father was doing that. He will. Yeah. My father-in-law teaches him right. Yeah, I got no shot. Yeah. By like six, he's going to be kicking the shit out of you. Stuff. Yeah. Sorry. Well, Sorry for the language. Well, followers, well, people. Yeah. No, nah, I was just telling. I was, about fishing. We're talking about Kung Fu. Yeah. Well, you know what? I was telling Chris, I'm beyond happy to see how you've act. Like, if you'd have told me you'd have been a good dad, I'd have been like, no way. Dead beat. You're an awesome dad with that guy. You, The way you spend time with him, your days off, because you have a ton of shit going on. Stuff going on. Sorry, I got bad language again. Stuff going on. You're a great dad. And you know what? I'm proud of you. That's it. It's really cool to see. Well, it means so much coming from you, Casey. I appreciate that. Thanks, buddy. You're, right. you're straight lying. I know you lie, you guineas, but whatever. Hey, let's. let's on it. <laughs> hey, look at Chris's shirt. You should have seen. How pissed would Song and be right now? I, I, that's my. So that's the only thing I'm missing is I really had this plan that to like just dress up and be like top notch. You know, starch, starched starch out song. And, and I get to miss out on that this year, but I want pictures of Bob's shirts every day because he's going to be on point. Oh, he's it's his wife. Mrs. Song and does it. We just talked about it. She's going to hook him up because look at this. Yeah. Sounds like, sounds like I just need his wife. Easy. He's married. Oh, well, I tried getting oh, Chris. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I tried getting her. I got maybe, her maybe she's look looking at her. I, mean, I got to wear hoodies. I don't even have that stuff. Hey, hey, she's got one of my shirts, if that matters. She has one of mine, too. <laughs> but Songin couldn't, hey, where do you hear this? He couldn't make it today. Four days is too much for him. You know, we'll, old. we'll get to it's that point old. at some point. We'll be there. He, yeah, I hope so. I love Bob, I do. He, he, hey, did you hear he's running double divers? Hey, listen, when I first got to the Oak, you know, him and I had a little, little, we got into a little argument one day on the water because Rick was running planer boards, and now all of a sudden he's running planer boards. He's learning. You can teach old dogs new tricks. Oh, yeah. Oh, Pete Alex is an old dog. Apparently old dogs can teach old dogs new tricks. He's got Bobby <laughs> running double divers. It's weird. I can't wait to see this. <laughs> oh, it's so much fun. Yeah. It, Wilson, I, we were talking about Wilson and how the camaraderie there. It's a blast. Like I honestly have a great time talking with you, Pete. It's such a different environment than it is on my home port and on that end of the lake out here. That whole yeah. Maine Wilson is just, it's an absolute riot blast. The fishing's crazy. The camaraderie amongst the captains is crazy. And the ball busting and competition with each other is fun too. You know, I, I have kind of cut back on my fishing the last couple of years. Just, you know, I'm taking a whole weekend and uh, it's kind of my family every month. So I'm, I've kind of cut back, but. I took a whole week off just to be up in Wilson because the fishing's great and the camaraderie's great and just seeing everybody because everybody kind of congregates there in the springtime. So it's uh, it's a great time. I agree. Rick, you want to answer a fishing question? Sure, let's do it, man. <laughs> Glenn, be honest. Too. Glenn, Glenn asked this question earlier today and, and we didn't have a chance to answer it, so he asked it again. And he's asking about uh, he's running a third wire diver this spring. On the high three and a half and low one and a half setting, how far depth wise do these need to be separated in feet 
to not get in trouble with tanks. So I used to always just separate them by 50 foot. That was, uh, that's what I did when I was, that was pre smart troll days. Um, the, the one thing I find with people and their diver setups is there's the, the line counter is so inaccurate because number one, they're not filling spools up. They may have cut off a few hundred feet over the course of a year or two. And, and uh, so now they're down on their spool. So when someone's talking diver lengths and how many feet are out on their counter, you kind of got to take it with a grain of salt. Um, unless you're running a system like the smart troll and, and, and uh, you can actually see where that diver is fishing. It's, uh, you know, the line out thing is just a, just a number that they see on our fishing reel, to be honest with you. So you know, having that di yeah, having that dialed in is kind of uh, key to what we're doing. Yeah, yeah, and that, that's, that's just one, that. yeah, just just takes work and and effort. I might get kicked off this show now that I said the word smart troll. Yeah, it might be the last appearance by Rick and Jackie. It was a good run. Yeah, well, you know, <laughs> I'm, I'm missing. Fun, but... You know, there, you there's lots of. Yeah, well, I, I'm sure. I guess he's walking by right now. Daryl. Yeah, I use it all, man. I love it all. You got to. Yep. If yep. it's out there and it makes you a better angler, use it. And that's what's one thing that's great about you, Rick, is that you got your hands in so many different things. Hey, and hey easy. His head's big enough. Look at it. Don't don't give him any. Just, just tell me he's okay. That's what? what makes you okay, Rick, is that you got your hands in so many things and you're a good angler. Don't, don't tell him he's great. He's great. Well, again, it's a, it's the same thing, Casey. We're trying to grow the sport, and yeah, well, you're growing his head. A good way to grow the sport is to make Rick and Jackie even better than he already is. Um, and, you know, he's he'll tell you he can't do that. He's already yeah. there. Yeah, my tournament record's been sweet the last few years. Um, that's his karma biting in the ass. Mm-hmm. You know. So, you know what Rick, happened. You got, I, I, I fished all the good luck out of that old boat. I had to go out and get another one. So yeah. right here and proper. That's what I wanted to talk about, Rick. Tell us about the new boat. It's coming along. I wish it was coming along a little faster than it is, but uh, it will be ready in the next few weeks. And uh, the way this weather's holding out, it'll be mid. It will probably be splashing it around mid March. I'm really excited to uh, to fish this boat. It's got it's got all the latest and greatest that I could put on it. So I'm uh, I'm gonna have some fun with it. I'm looking forward to it. it. Can I come on the maiden voyage like I did on the Trojan? I'll bring Ripka, and we're going to bring you another big lure for the dash. I'd be cool with that. I mean, that big lure on the dash of that Trojan, that thing. I, I mean, it's still, I gave it away with the boat because I feel like no. I used all the powers. Oh, you're in trouble, dude. I need a new one for this one. So I, uh, I will invite you guys out, and I need a new extra large lure placed on the helm. How many questions? Like that was a great conversation piece on the helm of that boat. People always ask, do you really use that? And I had, you know, so I had a great story to, uh, to tell. So I think that was the Sabeel, like five piece jointed lure. It was like nine inches, 10 inches long. Yeah. And we brought it just to be a wise guy with Rick on his first trip on his boat. And he was cautious, you know, it's his first big boat. And I still remember I was part of it. Cause I was, I didn't have my, any boat by then. I was just a boat slut. And uh, we put the bag in the wrong side. We did a U-turn. We were just, it was a mess for all of us. But we had a great day, a lot of laughs. And now look at him. He's a legend. Yeah, I, I, we literally put the bag in the wrong side, and, and the boat was doing 360s. And so we're like, oh, we cool. I guess we did that wrong. We couldn't hey, figure it out. It took us a while. You live and learn, man. Yeah. That's how you learn. So you talked about having a Trojan, getting rid of that. Uh, tell our audience what, what boat you picked up and why did you go with that boat? We picked up a 36 Tierra. I uh, wasn't Wait. looking to sell the Trojan for whatever reason. I was scouring the, uh, I always keep an eye on Yacht World just to see what's what's uh, what's out there for sale. This boat kind of checked all the boxes. I said if I was going to buy one, it had to have a certain cabin layout, certain engines. Um, so it checked all the boxes. So I went and I looked at it and the rest is history. You know, it's funny. I was waiting for him to actually be a guest here. A memory came up from Richard to Jackie, and it said, real men wear Trojans, girls wear Tierras, and now I he's got a Tierra. I've been eating so much <laughs> because 
I am eating so much, bro. Uh, all the crap I talked about Sierra's, but hey, you know, I can admit that. Uh, well, welcome to the club, brother. It was, it was fun while it lasted. Now I got to join the crowd. Yeah, I'm with you. You know, I heard I heard Bob Song and Andy Candy were the first years on the lake, and now I'm the last one that has joined the group. Uh, if you want to find out more about Captain Rick and Jackie, you can go to his website, crazyyankeesportfishing.com. Book a trip with him. And uh, Rick, really appreciate you spending some time with us today. And I know that uh, you're busy over there on the other side of the state, but uh, appreciate you checking in with us and just saying hi. And as much as Casey says he doesn't miss you, I miss him. Well, I, uh, I, really, I really appreciate what you guys do. These podcasts are awesome. It gives stuff to do in the off season. Um, you guys have some great guests on. So I appreciate what you and Trevor do. And I just wanted to leave with this. So Casey, I don't know. Did you see the, the new video from Fishhawk showing the facility? Okay. No. Oh, dude, you got to see this facility that these guys work in. It is a nice looking facility. I was very impressed. I almost feel like I almost feel like Trevor's got one of that nice Italian car stuff in there. You know, Zugatis or Maseratis. I mean, is he a top like G? Yeah, Trevor. Yeah. Trevor's a top G. Top he, G. He, yeah. No shit, Trevor yeah. Tate. Yeah, he does yeah. not have one of those. He is. He's like you guys. He's kind of a. Now, he's a top, you know that explains a lot. Hey, Rick, you're a genius. Uh, yeah, he's a top G. I could see him putting on that Italian leather coat, jumping in his Maserati. <laughs> you saw the Cody were that <laughs> an old school throwback that he had when we like did the the probe like reveal. Pete Alex has one. It was like from the '80s, for sure. No, was, you guys got a nice facility there, man. It's cool, and I really appreciate you guys and the products you come out with. Um, you know, I mean, this new this new lithium system is going to be awesome. Um, so I'm, I'm excited to run it. So thank you guys for everything you do. Awesome. Thank you, Rick. Captain Rick. Let's see you, buddy. From Crazy Yankee Sport Fishing. And our next guest is coming on in just a second. Come on over, Lance. Yeah, if you want to jump into that drawing we're going to have at the end of the show, drop hashtag Captain Casey right here. Lance, hashtag Captain Casey into the comments, and that'll get you into oh. the drawing for the fish hawk. Hey, buddy. Hey, how you doing? Good you. Good. And also, uh, Casey's throwing in those spoons. Lance, how you doing, man? Chris, fish, fish, fish USA, USA is throwing those spoons in. Fish USA, yeah. Casey's paying for them. Well, he said he didn't yeah. his credit card to yeah. get things for him. So. It's all good. How's things going with you? Good. Yeah, I've been busy. I had a couple seminars today and just getting settled in. So while I school good. starts tomorrow. Money this time? No, you don't need no. to put it on, but oh, don't, don't play with it. Don't keep playing with it. <laughs> I've heard that before. Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, so uh, tomorrow night we got a meet and greet for the Wally School and then mm -hmm. full day um, Saturday, eight hours of instruction and then uh, hour and a half on Sunday of uh, live Q&A. So yeah, we got Got a lot coming up. Trying to save my voice. Yeah, that's that's a tough one. Um, just tell us about what's going on with teaching fish, and I saw you kind of done some new stuff with the website. Yeah, so uh, completely redesigned our website. Um, we've got a lot more content that's available for free, right? Um, you know, we've always had our, our Angers Club, which is kind of the, the high end, really deep dig or deep dive content. Um, that's still there, but we, we're starting to do a lot more just public content, short little 15, 20 minute seminars. Um, that that just focus on one topic so everybody can kind of get started uh, completely new design lots of cool stuff we have a lot of our stuff that we used to do on dvd now has moved to our on demand so you can you know for less money you can download and watch them anytime you want to do them um we offer an all-in program you can buy all of our digital stuff um for 250 bucks and you have year access to everything we've ever done mm -hmm. uh, which is pretty cool uh last year we kicked off the detroit river um, definitive course, which actually is my 35 years of experience on the Detroit River. Another buddy of mine that's been guiding down there for 30 years. Uh, we brought Ali Shakur in with his science background. So there's about 80 years of Detroit River experience and Ali. And what we did is we, we talked about how the Detroit River works. Migration routes in and out of the river. What fish do when they get in there? How will they come in? There's three basic ways in from Lake Erie. And depending on which way they come in determines where they're going to spawn, where they're going to move, how far upriver they're going to go. 
So we really dug into the science of how the fish come in, how they move throughout the different times of year. Uh, we did a little section focusing just on trophy walleye. So a lot of that little deeper dive stuff is, you know, put together more classes that guys can buy. And there's a lot more free content um, going on. So, yeah, it's it's always good to get in the studio and create content, but it's really cool to be out and talking to people live, you know. Staring at that camera, just talking to the camera gets old after a while. <laughs> yeah. Makes you feel a little old. Yeah. It, you know, it's, it's not the same. You know, when you can do a seminar, you look at somebody. Sure. And you can see, you know, we did the sonar seminar today. And we can see people's eyes light up and you kind of know what's going on. That's a whole different deal than just talking to a camera where you just don't have that that interaction. So um, it's nice to get back out and actually see a lot of people and, and talk, you know, talk fishing. So uh, that's what I love to do. So it's kind of nice to be, nice to be able to do it again. Yeah. That was something I wanted to talk to you today about was the Detroit River. Yeah. You know, we're, it's the Great Lakes Fishing Podcast. The Detroit River obviously isn't a great lake, but it's really part of that system. Yep. And can you tell us just a little bit about kind of how that, that system lays out and how it works and how you do your thing? Yeah, so Detroit River, uh, actually Detroit in French actually means the strait. That's what it means. So Detroit River is actually the connection between uh, Lake St. Clair and Lake Erie. So what we have found out over the years with, with studying uh, a lot of the new tracking stuff, we have kind of found out that Lake Erie, Detroit, Lake St. Clair, St. Clair River, and Saginaw, Lake Huron, all up around the front of Saginaw Bay, is one system. These fish aren't Detroit River fish. They're not Lake Erie fish. They move all over. So you may have a fish spawn one year in Saginaw River. Next year, that fish may spawn in Lake St. Clair. Next year, it may spawn in a reef in Lake Erie. The next year, it comes up in Detroit River to spawn. So these fish are very nomadic, a lot more than we thought. So what we're trying to do there is we're trying to capture the fish movement as they move up from Lake Erie into the Detroit River or down from Lake St. Clair into the Detroit River. So we got fish coming both ways. Um, it's a great fishery. Uh, we catch a lot of fish every year, you know, 15 to 20 fish every year that are you know, 10, 11, 12 pounds. Um, you know, most of our trips, we do five hour trips twice a day. Most of our trips, it's very easy to get your 24 fish that are two to five pounds. That's kind of the bread and butter. Um, they're good eaters. They're good eaters. Yeah. You know, it's, it's fairly simple. It's all vertical jigging. I do all hands on vertical jigging. Some guys pull bottom bouncers as the season wears on, but, uh, I like to vertical jig. Uh, you know, now we got a new casting jigs, so we're doing some casting trips, but the vertical jigging thing is the key. Keeping the boat straight. Moving your boat downstream at the same speed and direction as your jig is going, keeping your line perfectly vertical, moving that jig up four, five, six inches and dropping it nice and slow. Um, that way when a fish hits you, you, know, you got a rod in your hand, you know what's happening. Um, everybody kind of likes that that kind of fishing. So great fishery if you've never done it. Um, the boat control takes a little bit to learn because you got to be very, very precise with your boat control. Um, I tell people all the time, you know, if you got to think about, by the time you go, oops, you've already missed it. You're, you're, you're way past it. You have to be... I had the curve, so um, you know, if you want to come down the first time, hire you know hire a charter, let them tell you how to do it. But it's it's 32 miles of river. Um, at the widest point, it's a it's a touch over a mile wide at its widest point. Most of it is less than that. Uh, Canyon line, the U.S. Canyon line runs right down the middle, so we encourage people to have both a U.S. and a Canadian license because you can catch the wrong watercolor on the American side, either too clear or too dirty, and 10 feet away from you across the line, everybody's catching fish. So uh, it's a really cool experience. It's, it's, it's really neat. Um, Detroit, the town of Detroit, everybody else, ooh, Detroit, right? Um, town of Detroit is about two and a half miles of river. That's it. The rest of the river, specifically down river, is what I call river towns. They're these little towns that have five, six, eight thousand people, and they just run into each other. So you have a town and a little gap and a town. It's just, it's just all these little, really cool niche towns. And if you're worried about Detroit, that's not what it is, right? Like I said, Detroit, downtown Detroit's only about two miles of the river. The rest of it is really cool. Um, you know, towns like Niagara Falls, just little niche towns. And um, it's a really cool place to visit. There's lots of history on Detroit River. And if you want to come and take a vacation and bring the kids and, and the wife, um, there's lots of museums and lots of really cool things to do um, in the Detroit area. So it's definitely a place to visit. It's, don't believe the news. Yeah. You're not going to get shot coming to Detroit. <laughs> Lots of cool things to do. Tell me about the where where are your clients coming from to go fish with? So it, it, it's 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 a good mix. Um, I have a couple of groups that come from Iowa every year. I got some guys that come from Kentucky every year. We got some Wisconsin guys. Uh, I have a group that comes from Pennsylvania every year. Most of my guys though are Michigan guys, and most of them can fish on their own. 
they hire me so they don't have to do the work. They come over with their buddies. Now nah, I'm doing all the work. They just show up. They go fishing. Um, they can laugh. They can joke. They don't have to run the boat. They don't have to pull their boat over. Um, so a lot of my guys, a lot of my customers are Michigan people that fish, have their own boat, and can do this. They just like to take a day and just have a good time. And I, I like to think it's my personality that brings them back. You know what I mean? <laughs> you know what? I'll agree with you there. A lot of the fish is the bonus. Yeah. It's not about dead water, but no, it says, yeah. You go out and have a good time and, and mesh with your people on yep. the water and have a good time. Fishing. Yep. Just good vibes, good fishing. Yep. And I, I, I really believe that. You know, if you go out and have a good time with the people, the fishing's going to be good. They're going to want to come back. They're going to recommend you to other people. Yep. And that's how you grow. Okay. I, I look at it as I'm just going fishing with four of my buddies. Yep. Even if I've never met you before, we're going we're gonna to be friends before we're done. You know, and it's always funny as a charter captain, you always try to find the one guy. There's always one guy in the group that's, that's, that's kind of the, 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 the kicking post. You try to find that guy, right? Because you want to jump in there with him too, right? Um, and then they come back the next year, and then you try to go, okay, I got to give old Steve a break here. Right. I'm going to pick on the next guy, the first guy that screws up. And now, you know, Steve's your good buddy now. So I love it. Yeah, it's just, yeah, I do. Yeah. It's just a good time, right? If you provide an experience, the fish usually come. And the fish are a bonus. But I, I, I get people all the time, look, if you're just coming for a cooler full of fish, you know, we don't allow drinking on the boat. We, you know, that there's reasons for that. But I, if you're just coming for a cooler full of fish, don't hire me. That, that's not what we're doing. That's not. And there are guys on the river who basically they fish, they leave the dock at 630. And when they get their fish, they're done. They commit. And down on the Canadian side, there is no limit as far as size goes. So they'll run over the Canadian side, and anything that's over 13 inches, they'll keep. And you can leave the dock at 6.30 and be back at the dock at 7.15 with your 24 fish. It's that simple sometimes. Um, we don't do that. You book me for five hours, you get five hours. We're done fishing. We get our fish at 7.15. Let's go try something else. Let's go look for different things. We've got four nesting uh, eagles on the Detroit River, the section of Detroit River. The second largest blue heron rookery east of the Mississippi River is on the Detroit River. Um, we have two uh, osprey nests on the Detroit River. We have three nesting pairs of loons on the Detroit River. Um, so there's lots of things to go do, to go see, try other places to fish, you know, maybe try to catch a big fish. Yeah. There's lots to do in that five hours. But basically what you're telling me, though, is of course. it's a lot of boat control is really key. Boat control is all of it. All of it. Yeah, all of it. So... Um, we teach it as what we call follow your line. Everybody wants to point to the current, but you know, the whole idea is if, you're, if your jig is vertical, if you're fishing current and your jig is vertical, it's going downstream at the exact same speed and direction that natural food is brought to a fish. So it looks right. So what you do is just get your jig to the bottom, and then whatever way your line goes, you just drive your boat that way. The whole thing is making small, quick adjustments on your boat to keep your line straight up and down. If it's straight up and down, it look, it's looking natural. And if it's ahead of you, you're dragging, and we have a saying called, if you're dragging, you're snagging, because now you're jigging the bottom, you really can't feel. And if it gets too far ahead of you, it usually lifts up off the bottom, so you're not making bottom contact. So, you know, you're trying to keep your, your line in a circle about the size of a, the bottom of a solo cup, mm -hmm. um, and it takes a lot of really quick adjustments. I make adjustments. I run a motor guide XI-5. It's electric trolling motor, um, electric steered. So I use a remote, mm -hmm. and I hit a button uh, about 30 to 35 times every minute. So I'm constantly making little small changes. Yeah. And it's, for some people, it's hard to learn, right? It, it just... It sounds hard. It, it's hard, yeah. 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 yeah, especially you're trying to... You're down there, you're trying to catch fish, you're trying to figure out where you're at, you're trying to learn the water, you know. Um, I get guys that want to learn how to do it, and I take them... We got lots of spots for just sand, and we can fish forever and never lose a jig. And you just teach them it's a lot better to make a lot of short, quick moves than it is to make bigger moves. And that's the biggest thing to learn. So just getting your line to the bottom and just following the line. Still talking fishing? Yeah. 35 move maneuvers with his thumb, yeah. short moves. Yeah. You know, you, uh, you married? I am married. He's a lucky lady. <laughs> I can tell you that. <laughs> By the time I get back from fishing, yeah. my thumb's worn out. I mean, come on. I think it's, it's about the endurance. <laughs> this guy, forget about it. I thought it was about that big, right? <laughs> oh, whoa. She is a lucky lady. And you use, uh, somebody's popping on here right now, you use a pontoon boat to do this. So I do not on the river. The pontoon I use for my trolling trips. Okay. Uh, on the river, I have a 20 foot pole trap. Okay. Um, only because, not because my iron quest, my iron quest would be a great trolling boat. Get, I can't get my anger quest into my slip. I have a slip down there, and I can't. It's, it's about 23 feet between the back of my motor 
in the back of the guy behind me, and my pontoon is 26 feet long plus the motor. There's no way I can get in the slip. So, um, you know, and I, and I like the, the river. I do a lot more running in the river than I do on the lake. That lake is usually three miles out and we're fishing. I may start my day in the river. I, I, I dock mid river. I may run 18 miles up to the bottom of Lake St. Clair. The water might be dirty. I may run all the way back down to Lake Erie. So I may put 40, 50 miles on my boat, um, you know, on a trip, on a five hour trip. Well, it's a lot easier to do that at 50 miles an hour than it is at 30 in the pontoon. So, right. um, that gives me a little more flexibility, right, to, to, to move up and down. And uh, it is a little easier to control, um, but it's an absolute riot to fish. I see Mark says a hard work. Yeah, Mark, book the chart in. I'll do all the work. He just gets all the fish. <laughs> Troy River sounds like hard work. <laughs> sounds like that to me. That's, that's why they hire me, Mark. Hire me. I'll take you fish. You don't have to do anything. Yeah. Well, so you, you do the Detroit River thing, yep. and you talked about you, you do some trolling out in Lake Erie as well. Um, with the angler class, tell me about those trips. So uh, we're down the Detroit River right until uh, right before Memorial Day. We usually start the last week of March. We're there till Memorial Day, take a couple of days off, and we start on Saginaw, our Saginaw Bay. Our summer trolling is on Saginaw Bay, not very far from my house, uh, and then we go down to Lake Erie in the fall for for trophy fishing, and that's a riot too. So on the pontoon, I could get six people on the pontoon. Uh, you know, most days we're running sixteen rods. We run seven. Offshore boards on a side and down run on each side. So we've got 16 lures going, lots of people. The pontoon is fun because there's a lot of room. So it's a center console, and I've got a, I've got as much room in the back of my pontoon as a lot of guys do on, you know, some of the smaller salmon boats. ton of room back there to work. All my customers are up front. They like sitting up front. Um, and they just stay up there. Then when it's time to catch a fish, they just come to the back. They reel the fish in, net it, and they go back up front, and they have a snack. And, hang. and the other thing about the pontoon you cannot be unhappy on a pontoon. There's no way you can be unhappy on a pontoon. Right. So I never have pissed off customers because we're on a pontoon. Yeah. They, they made did a song about that. They did make a song about that. I actually it's just had, attitude. had a pontoon. I'm going to tell you, I had pontoon envy. It's, got, yeah, it's, they, there's something about it. I will tell you, that was an older one, and it wasn't good in three to four footers. Yeah. Kind of sketchy running back into them, but pontoons are a good time. They so really I, are. I run a 26-foot angler quest, built for fishing. It's, it's called Pro Trolls, specifically designed for trolling. Um, 26 foot long, it's 26 feet inside the rails, and a two foot depth extension up front. That moves some of the weight back a little bit. That helps the boat. Mm -hmm. um, but it, it, it's funny to have people look at you when you go on a pontoon, and they're getting much more popular, right? I mean, they, they multiply, they just about double in number every year, and there's a lot of them now. Um, but I run by guys in big waves. Mm -hmm. I'd rather be in my pontoon because I'm on top of them. I've got three 28-foot keels, right? So the boat doesn't get blown off. So one of the things you hear about pontoons, well, you get blown. No, you don't. If you've got a regular boat, you've got one keel. It doesn't take a lot to move that one keel, right? I've got three keels. I've got three 28-foot keels. Tune. You can't push it. You know, I, I tell guys, hey, take a bicycle and ride through an obstacle course. It's pretty easy. Try a tricycle. It's a lot harder to move those three wheels. That's what the pontoon does. So what I can do in the pontoon that I can't, doing a regular boat, even with autopilot, is I can tack the waves. I can I can tack I can attack a wave forty five degrees into it and stay straight if that's the right way to go. Fish Hawk tells me that's the right way to go. I can do that. Whereas my regular boat I'm constantly fighting, yawing back and forth. Nice so plug. You see that? So yeah. I worked it in. That's good. Yeah. That's professional. That was awesome. That's what I, I do, baby. I like that. That was good. <laughs> that's good. That's what I do. I mean, he's a walleye guy, but he's still good. You know what I mean? I don't know when the last time you heard a scream and drag, but he catches a lot of walleyes. I scream and drag, I know we're stuck. Stuck on bottom. There you go. There you go. Yep, we had a dragger. Tell me about what you got here. Yeah, so this is our new casting jig. So, um, you know, casting's becoming a big deal. And, and, and it's a lot of fun, right, to cast as opposed to jig or especially troll. So casting's become a big deal. So we wanted to build a jig that did a couple things. Slides to the weeds, lodge and fish, swim baits to the weeds. But also worked through the rocks, allowed you to snap jig, jig trolling, and allowed you to cast it. So what we do is we took our vertical jig. I just took that basic design, touched the current very well. It's got a flat bottom, so when it sits, it sits, hook up. Uh, and we just different hook out, a little tweak to the head design. Uh, nose out the front, or line tongue out the front, so now it's a casting jig. Uh, Craig Sleeman has used it a lot. Uh, one of the couple things he said about it, he goes, the, the profile on forward-facing sonar is amazing. 
So it's 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 the right amount of mass. It's the right size. If you're fishing for facing sonar, it's very easy to see. Um, and he's fished it through weeds, rocks, sand. Um, he loves it. We had to do a little tweak when we first got it. If you if you lifted it and dropped it, it would come too far forward. The tail of the body would hit the line. So we had to kind of change some of the balance of the jig. So now it falls at about a 45 degree angle. So we don't have any of that. So we just took uh, the design that's worked for us for a lot of years on the Detroit River, our, our custom thumb jig, and we just turned it into a, a casting jig. So we're pretty excited about it. People want to pick up one of those or find out more about it. Where do they go? Fishingfishing.com. Uh, at the top of the page, there's a store link. They can click it. Actually, today is the kickoff of Jigging Palooza. Yeah. We're going to do a little promo here at 8 o'clock live on the Teach and Fishing Basic page. Try guy. Uh, you can get nine jigs, six bodies, and access to three of our online seminars that talk about casting for 40 bucks. So you got you got access to three seminars, about three hours of education, uh, nine Good. jigs. Uh, six bodies um, for 40 bucks. Call it Jigapalooza. Go. So they can go to our website, teachfishing.com. I think it's right, right at the top. Very, very good. Cool. Awesome. All right. Well, thank you, Lynn. Always good to see you. Thanks for stopping in. Awesome. Good luck, pal. Appreciate it. Good luck this weekend. Enjoy the, the uh, school. And, uh, Can't wait. Should be really good. Thanks for having me. Thank you, sir. Thank you. So we got a new Jeez. guest coming in now. We're going to. Chris, I'm excited about this one. Here. Here. Yep. This is this Casey, is going to be a good one. Pull that seat in there. And yep. Can have them come on in, guys. Yep. Have a seat. How are you guys? Hello, you? You're good. So we got Jana and AJ. Yeah. And you guys are from Real Cool Lures. Sure are. Yeah. Tell me about Real Cool Lures. Um. So I started making lures when I was ten. Um. I'm now sixteen. Um, I was I lost some lures fishing oh. on Oneida in the weeds, and I asked my mom and dad if I could make my own, and um, they said yeah, and I started painting on plastic spoons to practice over the summer, and then started painting on harness on harness blades, and here we are now. <laughs> here we are. So you start you kind of started this as a need. It was something that, yeah, exactly. that happened, and you're like, here's how I'm going to deal with this, and yep. how did how did the how did it progress from just doing something for yourself to packaging and trying to sell this thing? Well, that was kind of on me. Um, they worked all summer. Um, uh, he was, like you said, he got all this like plastic silverware because he was kind of using the curvature of the plastic uh, spoon to practice on. And then uh, I was just like so proud of what they were working on that I uh, made a Facebook post on my own Facebook page saying that they um, this is what my kids have been working on. And it got shared to some of the local um, fishing pages. And the next thing I know, I got all these messages saying, how do I order? How do I get them? And um, Real Cooler started. Mm -hmm. So um and then we started with the harnesses, and then we can um, kind of blame Casey here for getting into school yeah. because we, um, Casey had advertised a um, charter, like he was saying about going with kids, and we had, his biggest fish he had ever caught was, uh, what? 21 inch walleye, maybe. Yeah. yeah. And so, of course, that, uh, his record ended when we went with Casey. <laughs> so, um, we... Uh, had decided he decided to try making some spoons, um, and so we painted up a couple and brought them out with Casey, and we caught it. I have it here. If we uh, do, I have it here. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I still this, remember it. this one here, <laughs> and we caught um, a bunch of lake trout that day, and uh, so then we started making trolling spoons yeah. too. So we. And then he became addicted to catching salmon too. Yeah. So um, it's yeah, it's it's nice. cool lures and it's a cool story. Yeah. These guys come out in the boat. He tells me he catches you know he makes these lures like we have them with you. So we caught some fish on traditional cowbells and then we put these down and I think we caught three or four that day. But it was cool to see. I, I was just talking to you about this families fishing. And it was the family on the boat, and it was just a great time. And you follow, and you start seeing, like, you follow their Facebook page, and you see he's into it, and the family's into it, and then you see him at this show and the next show, and you and you watch, then they buy a boat. Yeah. So now they got their own boat, <laughs> you know, and now they're catching fish on their own, and it's like little by little you watch like the addiction happen, and it's just so cool to see like 
they went on a charter. They didn't have a boat. They had a little interest in fishing. Obviously, he was doing some lures, but nothing. And then all of a sudden, here he is, Niagara Expo. Hope so. And he's making colors that catch fish, and he's into it. And it's like, how better? How much better does it get than this right here? Yeah. Yeah, we got the website on the page right now for everybody uh, right up on the screen. It's realcoollures.com. It's real, R E. E-L. So real cool lures that kind of you can go there and in order and then who does all the packaging and the shipping? We do. You do. We do it all. Yeah. Um yes, obviously AJ's a junior at um Baldwin Hills. So he in his free time, um weekends, after school, etc., he does a lot of painting. And um then uh even we even have grandma in the mix helping with beating and all that. But we help um we just help him. Girlfriend? It's awesome. <laughs> Not a boy. Give me some of that there. <laughs> Stay single as long as exactly. possible. It's exactly. lots of fish to catch. Exactly. And just like there's lots of fish to catch, there's lots of fish in the sea. Exactly. You know what I mean? Yeah. Take advice from me. I'll, I'll help you. I can be your mentor when it comes to it if you want. I'm there for you. Mentoring sure. program. Have I chartered you? Yeah. Same thing, mentoring. I can do that. No problem. Free charge. <laughs> Just, you know, don't tell mom. We'll, you know, we got you. So let's go through the product line a little bit here while we, while we have everything laid out. Show yeah. us everything you've got here. Um, so this is our this is our natural perch. We actually made this last year, I believe. Mm -hmm. And I think this is our number one selling spoon by Dubusa. Yeah. We sold the Good looking spoon. Yeah. Yeah. Um, this is like I would say one of the original harnesses we've made, um, kind of an original pattern. Um, we started with it's a, our fire tiger, uh, and then obviously this was I think our first spoon we used on Casey's boat. <laughs> it, catch, it catches fish. I saw it in the Mako. Oh. Yeah. What's that one called? This is just the Gremlin. Gremlin. Um, I mean, green Gremlin. Yeah. Um, we, that, that one's gonna sell out now. Yeah. Everyone can yeah. see this. Casey yeah. put the certification out, guys. If you're in, if you're in the area, stop by and see these guys and. 100% buy a couple spoons, you won't be disappointed. Yeah. Thanks, Casey. And then this is a new spoon we made this year. It's just the um, chicken wing. This is a copperback, actually. Uh, this one. You've not used this one yet. I hope you use this no, year, though. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's a good walleye spoon you know? and brown trout spoon. I know buddies in Lake Erie that use that. Yeah. And then this year, also, we started making slim spoons. So this is our slim green goby we made. Um, we've yet to use this one, also. And then this one is our pickle seed, also a new one we made this year. It's also slim. Um, this one, and then this one is our dew pearl, another new one we made this year. Look at you go. Yeah. We made a lot this year. This is the UV. <laughs> Started from the bottom, now we're here, Chris. You know what I mean? <laughs> Look at this. And then this is our minnow teaser, a walleye teaser we made. Um, yeah, it's a new. I think doing it. Yeah, so we started the. You did the walleye with a double hook and all the beads yeah. and all that because they've got a lot of he gets a lot of custom order requests yeah. out for lake erie mm -hmm. which is why we're really excited to be at this show because uh, of proximity here to <laughs> lake erie um so it's been nice to add that to the product yeah. line too yeah. so so you guys just kind of you started this as as a young man six years ago yeah where do you see it going what's what's your next step that's a good question i would like to eventually charter my like as myself yeah. with our own product that'd be awesome mm -hmm. or you know maybe open a bait shop i don't know that'd be pretty cool <laughs> well i'm gonna give you an offer if you ever want to be a mate on one of my boats oh, that'd, be spot. Awesome. that'd be awesome <laughs> it's it's back it's on youtube it's on fish pops <laughs> podcast so there is documentation all right if you want to come on a boat and work summer that'd be awesome you let me know here's a handshake awesome thank you so much all right pal yeah I love seeing kids get into it. Honest <laughs> to God, they're, I, like, I was just talking to you earlier before we started this podcast. Families and kids are my favorite trips. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, guys. I'd get rid of every bachelor party, <laughs> every four guys that want to come out and fishing buddies and have families on the boat every day. And it'd be the best charters ever. Yeah. It's just, it's such an awesome experience to watch. And this is just like amazing to see these guys showed up and they were green. They didn't know much. I mean, no. They, they obviously had a, a, an interest in fishing, and six years later, look at where they're at. It's This is, like, awesome. Yeah. It's just really cool. So it's Gene really Lemon cool. It's a, real cool lures. <laughs> this is a guy that watches our show all the time. He says, that add some worm burners to your lineup. Well, there you go. All right. All right. <laughs> if you're looking for new product ideas... That is what's been so awesome about the fishing community. First of all, yeah. I am so appreciative how, like... 
ridiculously supportive they've been um of age you know and being a kid and they have given us such great tips and advice and telling us new you know product ideas and new patterns so we are always up for any feedback and advice and he does customs too which so sometimes if people can't find their favorite spoon color or pattern anymore just shoot us a facebook message or email etc because he is fabulous at copying and patterns and coming up with the thing that you guys could use how did you learn to do this uh a lot of practice a lot (laughs) of yeah i think just time spent doing it and eventually i learned it and picked it up do you have a pile of of rejects? Yeah, we have a, yeah. Lot, we have a lot. Yeah, we have a lot of rejects. Yeah, yeah, we gotta make sure they're perfect. Yeah, yeah he is definitely like that engineer type. Yeah, that everything has to be just so. Yeah. Um, before it goes out, so. You said grandma helps out. Yeah. And, yeah. and you've got you and mom, and yeah. then I saw your dad over yeah. at the booth. Yeah. Who else is involved? Um, my sister used to be involved, but she's moved into sports, a lot more sports now. Boyfriend? Uh, I mean... Uh, I don't know. Do you yeah. like him? Yeah. Well, I'm never really you don't have to like him, it's I'm okay. I've really met any of them. Yeah, <laughs> you don't like him. You say you don't like him, that's your yeah, sister, you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> it's okay. You know what's yeah. cool? How about your friends? Are they involved with you? They like, no. Are you like the fishing? So, I can relate to you a little bit. Yeah. I'm probably like, if I had, if anyone in my class, when I graduate, they wanted to be like, what was Casey known for? Yeah. Fishing. Yeah. Like I was a fish head. Yeah, a lot of people look at you. are still a fish head. Yeah. You know what? <laughs> totally cool. <laughs> if they don't like it, exactly. They're not cool. <laughs> they're certainly not real cool. No. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so when you're not doing this, what what do you like to do other outside of that? Um I'm really big in the gaming, like esports. I'm on my school's esports team actually. I play Rocket League. Um I spent a lot of time doing that. Um He's, yeah, he he's very, very good at this game called Rocket League, which is very surprising because all he does is fish, so you wouldn't yeah. be good at, like, <laughs> gaming as well. Yeah. And eye like, coordination. Exactly. Oh, ladies, what did I, yeah. ladies, you want a real good guy? Fisherman <laughs> and, and esports? Yeah, yeah. 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 yeah, that's where it's at. Yeah. Who cares about these guys that hunt? Yeah. <laughs> and it's growing. It's something yeah. that... Fishermen are where it's at. We have a university in the town that I live in, and they have an esports yeah. team with the university. That's something that, you know, I had some friends growing up that were into rodeo, and it was like, well, what do you do with rodeo? Well, there's, you, you can get a scholarship for rodeo. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, and esports is the same thing. Yeah. yeah. Syrac- like um, Syracuse University, all the local colleges are being cute, offering scholarships, and are yeah. really um, big into playing and doing that now, which is yeah. really great. So, yeah. Just don't lose your focus, all right? Fishing's yeah. where it's at. Exactly. Yeah. Okay? <laughs> what do you have for trips planned for this year? Where are you going to just fish? Oh, that's a good question. Uh, probably all over. I mean, anywhere I can go. Um, I love the Finger Lakes. I love Ontario. I want to get better at Ontario. Ontario is tricky. Um, yeah, it is. It is very tricky. Um, really, anywhere I can go. Yeah. I just he love said he it. wants to go to Lake Erie. Yeah. Because we've so never fished Lake Erie ourselves. So. Yeah. We go to Cuba. Yeah, Cuba? he's big. I'll tell you what. I'm going to get you a trip on Lake Erie. I know a guy. That'd be awesome. He's, he's rough around the edges, <laughs> but his name's Pete Alex. Yeah. Pete, if you watch this, these guys are coming fishing with you this year. <laughs> I'll pay for it. They're coming. That'd be awesome. But So what's personal best? Let's talk about it. What, if you had one fish that you wanted to catch, what is it? Probably salmon. I mean, we started catching a lot of salmon last year. And yep. It's just they're just so much better than lake trout. Um, they I don't know Yeah, they do. They do. The drug. they do. It is. It's a big. Yeah, salmon's definitely my favorite. So you have the boat now. Yeah. yeah. May. Are you in school still? I am. Well, you know what they call a day when you go fishing? <laughs> Educational day. <laughs> so. When you don't feel good, go to school. Yeah. And when you don't feel good, or you do feel good, go fishing. <laughs> That's called That's educational smart. day. You're going to learn a lot more in the water exactly. than you are at school. That's smart. Come out to Wilson, watch the Dirty Goose Fishing Report, mm-hmm. go out and catch some kings in Wilson. <laughs> if you've not fished out here, tow your boat out here. It is worth it for, for oh, measure. Yeah. Yes, we want to you can even meet Pete Alex. He's a little rough around the edges. He's old, too. He probably won't remember your name. <laughs> that happens with age. He, you know what I mean? He's an old guy, but. He's a cool old guy, but come out to Wilson. We'll get you. These will work out here. Mm-hmm. Catch some fish on your own spoons. That's yeah. rewarding. And awesome. awesome. Yeah. I think it's awesome. Yeah. It's really awesome to have young people jumping into this and not just into fishing, but yeah. just entrepreneurship. Uh-huh. You know, 
no matter what you're getting into, it's just good to see somebody showing some initiative, yeah. solving a problem, yeah. and and just doing something different, something that other people aren't doing. So we yeah. appreciate you getting involved with this and yeah. stopping over and seeing us. And yeah. Again, you can look them up online at realcoollures.com and. AJ can make you some lures. Yes. And I think the uh, the custom stuff sounds really cool, too. Yes, so for sure. you got somebody that uh, wants something that they can't find in the shell. That's always the thing, right? Find something. If these guys fish haven't seen you, yeah. you can do that for him. So. Exactly. Very good. Yeah. Thank you. Well, yes, yes thank, thank you, you so much. Stopping by. And guys, it's awesome to see you as thank always. You. Look thank them up, guys. Honest people, real people, real cool. <laughs> thank you. Yes, thank you. AJ and Jen, I really appreciate you guys thank coming you. up. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right. Have a good show, guys. Yeah. Go back out. If you do get to the show this weekend, make sure you go over to the booth and pick up a couple of spoons or yeah, we'll see whatever you. it is that you need. All right. Thank you. Take Thanks, care. Guys. Well, Casey, that's it, man. We're, we're, we're done. done. I was like, oh, I'm kind of disappointed. I mean, that was, it, was quick. it does go by quick. That was yeah. the quickest two hours ever. Yeah. Well, let's, uh, let's draw this prize. Okay. Pull that up on the screen, and we're gonna draw. We got 39 entries. I like it. I didn't know who's winning. You know? Yeah, it's, it's fixed. All right, here we go. I'm gonna tell you his name. It starts with the J and ends with the C. All right, we'll see what happens. See if you're right. Oops. Let's do that. Oh, I was yeah. way off. Oh, so yeah, yeah. Right. T and R, J and C. They're both letters. Yeah, yeah. I mean, so, so there's only 26 <laughs> choices. Not that big of a deal. So. Congrats to Tom on Facebook. And, Tom, you can uh, go ahead and send us a private message on Facebook with your address. When we get back uh, to the office on Monday, we'll get that sent out to you. I'll give you the spoons so you can just do one thing. Yeah. And and the spoons off to us, and we'll get them sent out to you. Tomorrow we'll be back on the air, and a uh, whole new group of guests. Uh, if, you're, if you don't belong to our email list, go on to the website, fishhawkelectronics.com, sign up for our newsletter, and we send out the, the guest list right away on that. You can also check out our Facebook and Instagram. That stuff will be trickling out there as well. But uh, make sure you join our newsletter and get that information delivered to your inbox all the time. So, Casey Briscoe. How cool is that, though? Thanks, man. Those guys fished with me and now he's the lure maker it's just that's the cool thing about this industry and just seeing people grow like he wants to be a charter captain i think it's awesome yeah that's just that's what it's about he wants to be you nah, i don't even want to be me nobody wants to be me <laughs> besides trevor right. trevor kind of wants to be me oh, we're just, like, hey, did you hear rumor like 2024 trevor might actually go fishing with you i yeah yeah how crazy is that that's pretty crazy we both want your boat collection that's that's what it comes you can to. have the boat collection we're both like we want all the boats and you're the, the there's got a lot of 30 ones left out there so they're becoming collector items yeah I, I have my hands on two more that i'm in the works of trying to buy those blue ones are pretty they are a nice boat they're you, know, hot. you know what the, you don't realize how dirty they get yeah white doesn't show the dirt as much as a dark color yeah it's just like having a black car yeah same thing yeah very good. Well, thank you, Casey. Thank you. It's always a pleasure having you guys yeah. have yeah. me on the show. Guys, get a fish hawk. Like I told you last year, you need to know your speed, whether it's on the lake or in the bedroom. Enjoy. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, everybody. We'll talk to you tomorrow.